Boar's Head is bringing a slice of Japan to the deli. Introducing Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki Style Chicken. Tender, slow-roasted chicken breast, coated in our signature teriyaki glaze, where ginger, garlic, and a hint of brown sugar meet for a flavor that's both sweet and savory. New Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki Style Chicken. The bold flavor of Japan, now at the deli. Only from Boar's Head. Compromise elsewhere. Blog Talk Radio. This is True Capitalist Radio. True Capitalist Radio. I am your host, the man they call Ghost. The badass of business. Give him capitalism or give him death. That's it. Period. Broadcasting from his Skyline Office Studios in beautiful downtown Austin, Texas. You sound fruitier than a box of Fruit Loops, for Christ's sake. And now, he'll take it from here. Your host, the prognosticator of prognosticators... The man they call Ghost. <laughs> What's going on, folks? And that's right, I'm back. And I'm better and badder than ever. What's going on, folks? I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. For another edition of True Capitalist Radio, and of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost, and once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. This is episode number 172, 172 for all the folks keeping up with the True Capitalist broadcast, and of course, before we get anything, or before we get into anything, or we start doing anything, I'd like for everybody to please retweet the broadcast, all right? Go to the damn social networks, go to the forums, go to the blogs, and spread it around like wildfire, and let everybody know that True Capitalist Radio is in effect and in the house, folks. Do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, no BS, all right? Don't sit over there on your little pecker shafts. I mean, go out there and spread the word, all right? We got all kinds of little buttons underneath the damn player there, all right? All kinds of little... Uh, retweet this button, you know, Facebook like buttons, we got that stupid new Google button, share this button, you use those buttons, baby, all right? It's just a freaking goddamn click, for Christ's sake. Anyway, folks, I wanted to extend my sincerest apologies to all the individuals that were anticipating a show for the past several days, and unfortunately, I was nowhere to be found, but, uh, <laughs> You all have to realize that I am a capitalist and I have a life, all right? All right there, I have all kinds of other things to do, you know? I, I mean, I was actually helping the economy, all right? I was out there making large purchases out here, for, believe it or not. I mean, commissioned salespeople in Austin, Texas were creaming whenever I walked into the damn store, for Christ's sake. I mean, that's what I was doing, all right? I mean, have you seen the markets? Has anybody seen the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, making money, man. That's what I do. Has anybody seen the equities markets for Christ's sake, folks? I mean, what do you think I've been capitalizing on? All right, what do you what do you think of the money I've been spending out here? All right, that's what it's about. That's what I've been doing for the past days that I have not been on this broadcast. And I, I sure as hell hope that you've been capitalizing. And if you haven't, well, you're just going to be like these other milky licking jerk dicks that are out here begging for a loaf of bread from somebody. The government, big brother, anybody, for Christ's sake, when in actuality, it is up to you, the individual, to carve out your own destiny. And if you're going to refuse to carve out your own destiny, well, by God, you better wait for that bowl of soup, and you're going to be waiting for a long time for big brother government, for Christ's sake. Anyway, folks, (laughs) I was spending capital out here. I mean, I don't even want to talk about the things that I blew uh, money on this uh, past uh, several days that I've been off the air because I'm sure people's feelings will get hurt, you know? Oh, my God, I'm sure people's feelings will get hurt up in here if I start talking about, I start gloating, I start bragging about the things that I've been blowing my capital on. But let's just put it to you like this, all right? Uh, I, I've been purchasing all kinds of uh, large appliances. You know, I got this new uh, 
refrigerator that's got Wi-Fi on the refrigerator, baby. <laughs> Wi-Fi on the refrigerator. All right, no BS. I've spent some money on some goddamn uh, furnishings for the home, for Christ's sake. I bought uh, some imported, uh, I don't know, my wife liked it, some kind of Indian table or something. You know, believe it or not, it was all handmade by a bunch of Indians over there in India, for Christ's sake. It was imported, dropped about a couple of grand on that, for Christ's sake. Uh, invested in some artwork, you know. I mean, let me tell you, I like buying artwork. Uh, it makes me feel like Gordon Gecko from Wall Street, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and moreover, folks, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more here uh, in the next couple of minutes, uh, I've been buying heavily in uh, silver, believe it or not. I've been trying to accumulate as much silver as possible uh, because I'm starting to believe that here in the short term, for at least six to eight months, we're going to see a major bull market in silver. So uh, let me tell you something right now. I've been accumulating some kilos of silver, uh, 100% uh, .999 silver, for Christ's sake, and uh, the the bottom line is is that uh, you better get it while the getting's good, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not going to talk about it. Anyway, let's just get to the markets because I want to get to the reason why I have not been on this broadcast, and the reason is is because I've been major, making some major capital on the goddamn equities market, not just on the long term investments that I have, not only the bottom feeding opportunities that I made uh, some time ago, and you can read you know, read about those, you can listen to those on the archive at blogtalkradio.com slash ghost, all right? Uh, but let me tell you something. It's continuing forward, all right? I mean, it's continuing forward, and I hope that there are some sincere capitalists that are out there that listen to yours truly and entertain some of these plays out here. Well, let's get right to the stock market because I've been gone a long, long time, and there's been a lot of things in the news, and we want to get to it, and then I want to get to your calls, for Christ's sake. Anyway, let's get to the damn equities market, shall we? We've got the Dow Jones Industrials up today. It's been up, a steady uptrend all throughout the days I've been gone. And let me tell you, what made today a little bit more peculiar was this roller coaster ride of volatility. I mean, <laughs> and let me tell you, I day trade, all right? I day trade in hopes of accumulating more liquidity so I can put into other financial instruments, all right? But inevitably, this was a day trader's market today. I mean, did anybody see, uh, even in the futures, we looked like we were going to you know, have a pretty steady day on the positive side. But then when this uh, ridiculous Italy situation, because believe it or not, Italy is having its own implosion from its own socialist experiment. That's right. <laughs> I, I mean, it doesn't seem like they're going to be able to fulfill some kind of financial obligations to those that invested into their country. And uh, lo and behold, folks, uh, this is what basically had investors today on pins and needles. And uh, in the process of Italy trying to figure out what it's going to do with its own uh, situation, uh, investors were running scared. They thought there were, it was going to be another Greece situation. They thought that uh, the potential collapse of uh, the euro, I mean, we, we could be potentially seeing the collapse of the eurozone, uh, but it looks like the uh, Italians, uh, the, the Italian populace for the most part wants to stay in. Uh, it looks like I'm thinking, I'm, I'm just guesstimating by the footage that's coming out of Greece, I think that uh, the most, for the most part, Greece wants to stay into the Eurozone, but the bottom line is, is somebody's got to cover these ridiculous debts that these countries have. And unfortunately, these debts incurred uh, under the leaderships of certain socialist uh, systems in these countries, and as a result, uh, you're seeing, and we saw it uh, this past weekend in Greece, and we saw it here today in midday's trading in Italy. Both of these countries are resetting their goddamn forms of government, all right? I mean, they're, they're completely taking the idiots that are in power now. They're shoving them into a damn closet somewhere and just forgetting about them. They're having a new coalition government in both of these countries. And hopefully this coalition government can you know, somehow lead into a national election and that national election will put in an actual permanent government by the people and these austerity measures that both of these countries need to oblige will hopefully be accepted by both these countries and will live happily ever after. But unfortunately, folks, 
in my personal opinion, even if they do accept the austerity measures, I think that this is just kicking the can down the road. That's why I'm saying, folks, at this point in time, uh, the only thing that one can do is, as far as capitalists are concerned, uh, just stay away from liquidity. You know, just completely stay away from any kind of monetary notes at this point in time. You know, I'm not trying to sound like some kind of Alex Jones ass clown out here, but uh, let's be completely honest. There is no government that is being fiscally responsible with their monetary currency, or with their excuse me, with their currency for Christ's sake. All right, I mean they're continuing to spend like it's goddamn Zsa Zsa Gabor's uh, shopping spree for new shoes out here for Christ's sake, and it's just going to devalue the dollar. I mean, look, I have a little picture right there on the player that's flashing right there that's showing the devaluing of the dollar, folks. All right. So every time you cash that check, every time you cash that check and you put it in a monetary notes, uh, because of our government's fiscal irresponsibility and because they refuse to cut all the outgoing expenses, or at least some of the outgoing expenses that we have as a government uh, budget out here, and because uh, uh, this government it just continues to add more obligations, continues to add more financial obligations, we're going to continue to see the devaluing of the American dollar. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm not going to leave my capital in American dollars when sitting in the bank, it'll literally lose money. So inevitably, folks, what it comes down to is if you're going to be a capitalist, it's about owning. Do you understand? It's about owning, baby. You understand? That's why I'm starting to you know, be a little bullish on silver here, folks. I'm a little bullish on silver. We're going to get to that in just a second because we need to start owning. You need to diversify your capital. You need to be able to have, you know, uh, literally all the capital that you generate, you need to be able to have it diversified. So just in case any uh, particular anomaly happens to hit any one of these financial instruments, the other financial instruments will uh, potentially offset any other losses in uh, those anomalies that hit those uh, financial instruments in question. So let me just come continue going on here with the markets, and then we're going to get to silver, what I'm talking about. Anyway, we talked about Dow Jones Industrials up 101.79 points, a percentage increase of 0.84%, closing out the Dow Jones Industrials. And get this, 12,170.20 points for the Dow. Jesus Christ, what am I telling you, baby, huh? What did I tell you, all you idiots that were out there? Um, I don't know, Ghost. I don't think that this is going to be very, uh, a very good market. I, I think that you're going to say, shut up, all right? Shut up. Uh, look at me now, baby. Look at me now. The prognosticator of prognosticators strikes again. <laughs> Let's get to the S&P 500. S&P 500 is up today, 14.80 points a percentage increase of 1.17% on the day, closing out the S&P 500 at 1,275.92 points for the S&P 500. Uh, let's get to the NASDAQ. NASDAQ is also up 32.24 points, a percentage increase of 1.20%, closing out the NASDAQ at 2,727.49 points for the NASDAQ composite. So let me tell you, it's been a steady stream upward, baby. Steady as she goes, upward, baby, and put more cash in my pocket. And let me tell you something, if you're one of the market bulls that predicted what I anticipated, what I foresaw, and for you folks that don't believe me, look back at the archive, for Christ's sake, I hope that you're capitalizing too. All right, I hope that, you know, I hope that we're, ca I hope that you're capitalizing. That's all I'm saying, all right? I hope that you're making some goddamn money. Now, let's uh, get to the markets uh, from our English brethren across the pond. Uh, the FTSE 100 also was on the increase. It was up 56.52 points, a percentage increase of 1.03% on the day, closing out the FTSE 100 at 5,567.34 points for the FTSE 100. Let me tell you something right now, folks. It's been a great time. <laughs> It's been a great time out here for me, and I hope that all you other capitalists that have been listening to me for a long time, I hope that you've been diversifying your capital and, and entertaining some of the plays 
that yours truly has been suggesting, or at least been utilizing some of the uh, analysis and some of the commentary that I put forth as far as the business is concerned, to uh, you know, put forth some plays into your own personal finances for some major goddamn capital, baby. Anyway, let's get to the commodities, baby, because let me tell you something. I'm feeling good. I mean, you can hear it in my voice, for Christ's sake. I mean, the last show, I sound a little tired. And the reason I sound a little tired, baby, is because, let me tell you something, I'm working hard. You understand? I mean, I know that I'm a little older here, but I'm working hard. I'm working like 15, 18 hours a day. You understand? I'm keeping my nose to the book to try to figure out where the plays are going to be made because I got to have it. You understand? I mean, that's just all there is to it, man. I mean, it's all about capital, for Christ's sake. It's all about money. And for you idiots that are out there thinking that, um, ghost, there's better things in life than money. Oh, yeah? Well, what, asshole? Huh? Well, what, what, what is better in life than money, than capital? What, what is there? Um, uh, family. Oh, yeah, family. That's just great, isn't it? That's just great. Let me tell you something about family, all right? We're, we're about to approach the holiday season, all right? We're about to approach the holiday season. And unfortunately, yours truly, and if you happen to be a major capitalist that's successful in your life, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yours truly is not going to re- receive any kind of spectacular gifts for Christmas, all right? Uh, yours truly is not going to be invited to any kind of uh, uh, Thanksgiving gala that's going to impress me because of the ambiance put forth by, I, I don't know, some certain designer. No, nothing. You want to know why? Because I'm the person that does that. Oh, yeah, I'm the person in the family that brings over the family and has the big turkey. That's about, you know, I mean, I, I, I have the... The whole smear, you know, the wife goes out, she gets a decorator every goddamn holiday season, you know, decorates the whole damn joint to look like uh, uh, the cover of a Pottery Barn catalog, for Christ's sake. All right, I kid you not, for Christ's sake. I'm the guy who spends the money, bites the family over, and does that, for Christ's sake. And what and what do I get out of it, huh? What do I get? I get, I get jack crap, all right? I mean, when it comes to uh, uh, Christmas time, what do I get? I get a freaking tie, for Christ's sake, huh? A freaking tie. That's great. I'm sitting over here, you know, uh, giving you uh, atmospheres and, and holiday spirits that no one in their right mind would ever give, at least in my family, no one would ever give the kind of galas that yours truly gives, for Christ's sake. But does anybody appreciate it? Absolutely freaking not, all right? I mean, you know, one year, one of these family members of mine gave me some freaking booties. Can you believe this crap? Do you all know what booties are? Do you all know what booties are, for Christ's sake? I mean, it's these stupid little socks that got the little balls of that, you know, where the Achilles heel is, for Christ's sake. Supposed to keep your feet warm during cold weather times. Yeah, booties. Jesus Christ, this is horrible. This is why, folks, this is why I say it's all about the money. All right, it's all about the money. If you're going to sit over here and give me this family crap, you're going to be perpetually disappointed. All right, you're going to be perpetually disappointed. Haven't you ever noticed that everybody who was potentially successful in life, who was real close to the so-called family, their potential, their lives that could have went progressively forward, took a complete derailment because somebody in the family is some kind of a goddamn drug addict, or is some kind of a derelict, or some kind of a black sheep loser. And because somebody in the family is some kind of an imbecilic ass clown loser, for Christ's sake, this person that had all the potential has to go back and deal with this nonsense. because oh, the family. Jesus Christ. Anyway, I'm sick of all you idiots that are sitting here, you know, shoving in my face that... Um, money isn't everything, ghost. Hey, let me tell you something. Money not only is everything, it's the only thing. Do you understand that, scumbags? It's the only thing. And every time I make more money, I just parlay that capital into financial investments, and I'm just sitting fat, baby. You know what I'm saying? Sitting fat. That's what I'm doing, baby. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Woo! And you know what I do, though? I'll be honest with you. I know I'm 
kind of going off subject here, but I'll be honest with you. Every time I have the family over, and, you know, I know the wife, she goes overboard all the time, for Christ's sake. Literally, she brings in some decorator, and she wants to decorate the whole damn place to make it look like some pottery barred catalog magazine cover or something of that nature. But, you know, even though I blow all this money, and I know that I'm not going to get any goddamn gifts, and <laughs> I know that, uh, you know, these assholes aren't going to be appreciative. I make these people have to, you know, suffer, you know, because, you know, literally, if you're going to go through all this for your family, if you're going to go all out, you're going to cook the food, you're going to have the gala, you know what I mean? <laughs> you're going to have open bar, you're going to have some champagne bottle, whatever, whatever you're going to have, cranberry sauce and pumpkin pie, you know what I mean, pecan pie, whatever, whatever you're going to have, all right? Uh, the least you could do is make sure that these people have to listen to what you have to say, you know? Seriously, I mean, make sure that if, if these people are liberals, you make sure to shove right-wing politics right in their kisser, all right? And if they get a little uppity, all right, if they get a little uppity and start saying, hey, you know, I have a girlfriend, or, well, you know, whatever, well, if they start getting uppity here, then you are within your legal right to say, hey, don't sit over here and talk that way in my house when you're eating my food you're you're sitting here in my ambiance, for Christ's sake. If you don't like it, get the hell out of here, all right? And I'll make sure to never invite you to this great gala that I have every goddamn year again. And let me tell you something right now. Uh, they're they're going to shut their asses. They're going to you know sit their asses down. And then later on in the evening, when everybody's sipping on some eggnog, they're going to come up to you and say, Hey, I'm sorry. You know, I didn't... I didn't realize that, uh, you know, we were just getting a little confused. All this other nonsense, all right? I'm serious, man. I'm not going to sit over here and let these idiots suck off me. With all, all this, all the energy and the effort and the money that, that I blow every goddamn year, Thanksgiving and Christmas, not to mention New Year's, because, you know, everybody comes over here hey, all the time, all the time, for Christ's sake. And, and if it's not over here, I have to make sure to rent some place. You know what I mean? i got to go rent someplace somewhere and uh, make sure that everybody, you know, is well-fed. It's just it's stupid, man. It's disgusting. But I make sure these people sit there and listen. You understand that? They sit there and listen. And, and, and if they do anything that you don't like, you make sure to tell them. Yeah, I'm not joking. You make sure to tell them. Because if they don't listen, folks, well, then why are you even doing what you're doing? All right? If they're not listening to you, if they're going to, you know, trample all over you like you're some guy in a goddamn doormat, even though you're one cooking the food, putting up the food, putting up the ambiance and all this other nonsense, and they're still sitting here talking garbage, you know, put, you know, making innuendos in your face, trying, I mean, just, just, just being an all-out jerk, well, then you call them out on that, for Christ's sake, all right? I'm sick of this crap. As a matter of fact, damn my drink, for Christ's sake. My goddamn drink. <sighs> anyway, sorry. I'm sorry, folks. I mean, I just... I know we're getting down to the holiday season. I'm seeing a lot of idiots over here calling me, you know, the Grinch and Scrooge. And I've seen the goddamn YouTube videos that you ass clowns are putting out out here. But truth be told, folks, you know, the bottom line is... Is that it's just all about the money, you know? I mean, you have to understand that I can make any scenario that I want happen just by paying for it, all right? I'm not joking. I mean, you have to understand, any mood that I am in, if I'm in some kind of a mood where, you know, I want to go retro 1920s, roaring 20s, I could literally just throw down on the table and just make that scenario happen. Do you understand what I'm saying? I can do what I want, all right? I could buy your mother. All right, I'm serious. I could buy your mother, and for you idiots that are saying, "Oh, you you can't buy my mother, ghost. My mother's not for sale." Oh yeah. Let me tell you something. If I don't throw wads of money on the table that'll make your mother mine, you understand, and I'll sell her chastity thereafter. I, I bet you I can throw some damn, uh, you know, some diamond rings on the table. I bet you I could throw some gold bars on the table or, or something of that nature. I tell you, I could buy your mother. And for you idiots that think that I'm lying, how the hell were you born, huh? How the hell do you think you were born, for Christ's sake? Your old man 
gave her the old, hey, yeah, I'm going places, baby. Yeah, I'm going up there in the world. I'm trying to go out there. And and before you know it, out came you nine months later, for Christ's sake. So don't sit over here and give me this crap that, oh, my mother's not for sale. Yeah, shove it up your ass. Are you kidding me? Let me tell you something. And the thing is that your mothers are for sale cheaper than you think. I'm not joking, all right? I'm not joking. You you get a, a, a grade A uh, diamond, crystal clear clarity, goddamn two-carat diamond ring, uh, you know, on the table. I guarantee you that, you know, at least 85% of your mothers will drop trowel and uh, show uh, how she used to move that ass back in the 70s. I'm telling you this right now. I'm not joking. Jesus Christ. Anyway, I'm going off keister. I'm sorry, folks. I didn't mean to go off keister here, but, you, you know, I, I read the chat on the damn freaking chat room here, and, uh, you know, they just, they piss me off sometimes. So, anyway, we're going we're to get back to the damn market here. Let's get to commodities, shall we? All right, where are we at? Go uh, Commodities. We got Brent crude futures up today. As a matter of fact, all of energy is going up. So for all you folks that have been commenting recently that, oh, yeah, well, you know, um, gas has been gradually going down. Um, that's a good sign, right? <laughs> Shut up! What have I been saying, folks, that when you see futures go up, that you are going to see the impact of those futures going up at least uh, three or four weeks later. And I'm telling you, as we get closer to the holiday season, we are going to see the impact of the increase of these commodities here, all right? And we've been gradually going up. As a matter of fact, for the last five sessions alone, uh, WTI has gone up 5%. So that just goes to show you what type of uh, increase we've been having here in the energy sector. All right, so we got Brent crude futures up today, 63 cents, a percentage increase of 0.55%, closing out Brent crude at $115.19 per barrel of Brent crude oil. We've got gasoline futures also up today, $7, a percentage increase of 0.72%. Heating oil futures up very modestly, they're up 22 cents, a percentage increase of 0.07%. We've got natural gas, I'm telling you, one of the most volatile uh, future markets that I have seen in the energy in a long time. Anyway, natural gas is up today, six cents, a percentage increase of 1.79% on the day for natural gas futures. And Jesus Christ, we got WTI. Yeah, and, and you know, the reason I'm getting a little choked up here, I'm getting a little choked up because... Uh, even though we're seeing positive numbers coming out of a lot of the earnings, which is fueling the bullish markets that we're seeing here in the equities, I know for a fact that uh, we're going to see an impact on these uh, dramatic rises in WTI sweet crude. Uh, once again, folks, I know that there's a lot of ass clowns that are out there that wonder why I spend so much time on WTI sweet crude. The reason is, folks, is because the price of this commodity dictates not only how much you're going to pay at the pump for gasoline, but how much you're going to pay for products at the supermarkets and at the shopping malls, folks. All right? I mean, you idiots need to realize this. All right? I mean, you know, products that are produced at point A have to get transported to point B so you ass clowns can buy them. All right? And that uh, transportation, you know, uses some sort of mode of transportation that burns petroleum. So every time we see an increase in WTI sweet crude, we're going to see an increase in the transportation of goods. And those increases in petroleum prices are going to be relayed into the prices of the actual product. So this is why everybody should be at least a little bit interested in how much WTI sweet crude is and why it's so important to our economy there, ass clowns, all right? Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, hey, engineer, are, are you watching this for Christ's sake? No, I mean, implement chat room martial law on these sons of bitches for Christ's sake. Implement chat room martial law for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. I'm sitting over here trying to give uh, some market perspective. And here I am, I'm getting just severely, disgustingly disrespected in my own chat room. 
So if you're going to be sitting here flapping your fat Cheeto-stained fingers on the keyboard talking malarkey about me, well, you just sit over there and talk to yourself, all right? You just talk to yourself there, Milky Lickers. Anyway, WTI Sweet Crude is up today, a dollar forty-two, a percentage increase of one point four nine percent on the day, closing out WTI Sweet Crude at ninety-six dollars and ninety-four cents per barrel of WTI Sweet Crude. And as I've said, I'd like to see that price come down a considerable amount, at least to the seventy-dollar range. I mean, in a perfect world, I'd like to see it come down about fifty bucks. But at least in the $70 range, because uh, once again, not only does this high price affect how much we're going to pay at the pump and how much we're going to pay for products at the supermarket and the super, uh, supermarket or in the shopping malls, excuse me, but also it's going to prevent people from going out, having something to eat, going out for a movie, going out to the bar, you know, so things of that nature. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that affects the economy, that affects business owners, that affects small businesses, big businesses, that affects uh, those in the service industry out there that depend on tips. You understand what I'm saying, folks? I mean, you, you, people need to realize how this economic system of ours works uh, because we got a whole bunch of people out here in these Occupy Wall Street protests that don't know their asses from their elbows, and uh, they're just out there saying, um, can't. Can you please pay for my student loan? I didn't know what I was getting into. I'm sorry. Jesus Christ. Anyway, let's get back to the damn commodity, shall we? Agriculture. We've got canola down today, $2.10. Cocoa down today, $61, a percentage decrease of 2.22% on the day for cocoa. we got coffee continuing its descent. Oh, my God. I mean, I'm, I'm glad to see the price of coffee coming down. I mean, I think people pay way too much money for coffee as it is, for Christ's sake. I mean, geez, $9, $8, $9 at a damn Starbucks. And not only that, I mean, has anybody noticed that Starbucks is becoming the new bar nowadays? I mean, people are going to the Starbucks hanging out like it's the freaking club, like it's the bar or something, man. It's coffee, all right? I mean, you, Jesus Christ, I mean, well, well, I don't get it. I mean, when you go to a bar and you consume some alcoholic beverages, uh, you start losing a little bit of those inhibitions, you start loosening up a little bit, and you have a decent time, all right? That's what alcohol does to you, all right? What does coffee do? I mean, well, what exactly does coffee do besides sit over there and, and make you jittery when you have too much of it, for Christ's sake? Have you seen those assholes? Oh, my God. I mean, they look like walking disaster areas, these idiots that have like eight, nine cups of coffee a day, for Christ's sake. I mean, they can't stand still. You know what I mean? I mean, they blink like 80 times. It's horrible. But anyway, coffee is down today, folks. Uh, $3.40, a percentage decrease of 1.46% on the day for coffee. We've got corn futures up today. Jesus Christ, here we go with corn. It is up $7.25, a percentage increase of 1.11% on the day. Once again, folks, I mean, there should be no reason why these damn corn prices are this high, but uh, our tax dollars are subsidizing corn ethanol. Anyway, moving on, cotton is up today. I mean, finally it's up, I and mean, we've seen some dramatic decreases in cotton. It's up modestly today, $0.86. Cents a percentage increase of 0.89% on the day. Uh, but it doesn't look like it's inspiring any of these goddamn uh, uh, fruity-ass, over-feminized, under-30s male youths out here from uh, uh, dressing like a fruit bowl. You know what I mean? I always thought that the reason that these uh, Amber Crombie Fitch, which, believe it or not, is tremendously down as a stock, they took a horrible tumble. I think they were down about, what, 20 25%? on their stock price, horrible. I mean, may, maybe it is working. Maybe I'm just not seeing it out here in douchebag Austin. Uh, but let me tell you something right now. I am hoping, I am sincerely hoping that we have an, some kind of a fashion explosion of attire with males under 30 that actually fits them, for Christ's sake. All right? I mean, I'm sick of males wearing this crap that shows off an hourglass figure, and they're male. I mean, I, Jesus Christ, can somebody explain to me why this is happening? 
Why am I witnessing this in America, for Christ's sake? I mean, these Ed Hardy shirts showing man tits. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, you know, the Hollister, you know, legging pants, for Christ's sake. It's fruity crap, man. It looks like underground San Francisco 1979, man. Jesus Christ. I mean, you know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm sick of it. I'm just sick of seeing you fruity asses all the time. I'm just, I'm sick of it. Jesus Christ. Anyway, let's continue going, shall we? We got, uh, where, where am I at, engineer? I lost my place. Where am I at? All right, I'm at wheat futures. Wheat futures are up today. $12.75, a percentage increase of 1.73% on the day. Sugar saw an increase of 59 cents, a percentage increase of 2.33% on the day for sugar. We got soybean also up modestly today, $3.25, a percentage increase of 0.27% on the day. We've got lumber down today, $2.30. Uh, it probably has a lot to do with the bad real estate data that we heard today. Believe it or not, uh, foreclosures in America went up this month. All right, believe it or not, that's right. People are starting to foreclose. People are starting to become two months or more late on their freaking housing notes out here. Uh, and that number was up 6% this month, folks. So not looking good as far as people paying their goddamn financial obligations anymore. But lumber's down $2.30 a percentage a decrease of 0.99% for Christ's sake, all right? We got oat futures down today, 50 cents. We got uh, soybean oil futures up 65 cents today, a percentage increase of 1.27% on the day. And it looks like the bull-nosed bull dykes came out today for the wool futures because wool is up $2 today. Huh? Looks like Queen Latifah took out the girls and, uh, you know, looking for some nice shag wool that they can, I don't know. Anyway, let's get to the, let's get to the metals, shall we? The metals, let's get to the goddamn metals, shall we? Anyway, let's get to the metals, because uh, the bottom line is, folks, is uh, I'm bullish on silver, all right? I'm going to talk about it right now. I'm accumulating it. Uh, I I'm putting more of it in my portfolio, for Christ's sake. And in my personal opinion, I think that silver in the short term, remember, this is not some long-term investment here uh, where you're just going to put your money and just you know let it sit there, for Christ's sake, all right? But uh, in my personal opinion, this is what I'm doing in my own personal life here. I am accumulating silver. And I know gold is going up too, folks. Don't be wrong. Gold is going up, but I think that the higher percentage of return is in silver in the short term. Uh, so I'm bullish on it. As a matter of fact, I, 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 I'm not going to name how many kilos, but I've been purchasing kilos of silver. Uh, I've been also purchasing uh, other coins and bullion of silver, for Christ's sake, and that's exactly what I'm going to continue to do and uh, continue to do, as far as I'm concerned, until I feel that uh, this bull market, because we are approaching a bull market here. In silver, uh, until this bull market begins to start showing uh, tendencies of a potential crash. But uh, that's what I'm doing, folks. And, uh, and in my personal opinion, if you are, even if you're a kid, even if you're somebody who is under the age of 18, and you're still going out and getting some kind of a fast food job, you're getting a job at the movies, whatever the case might be, uh, don't go out there and blow your cash on crap, all right? Go out there, look for some silver. Look, I mean, hey, if you want to go for gold, go for gold. You know, uh, you know, you can diversify your metals. I think that metals should be more than what I traditionally said in your portfolio. Traditionally, I said that uh, metals should at least be 10, 15 percent of your portfolio. Uh, but in this volatile market, uh, in the equities, and not to mention this uh, disgusting monetary policy that we not only have in this country but in the European countries and other supposed mainstream economies abroad, uh, I think that, uh, you know, keeping your money in liquidity in any of these monetary uh, systems is, uh, you know, very risky. Uh, so in my personal opinion, I think that uh, you want to be well diversified and not only just uh, equities, not only metals, uh, there are other financial instruments, artwork. Uh, believe it or not, I am in the process of buying a classic car. Uh, I know that I said I was going to get a G-Series Mercedes-Benz, but... Uh, 
I figured, hey, you know, let's not start splurging. You know, if we're going to do anything, we should get a classic car. Uh, and I'm talking about a nice classic car that uh, you could probably put money on the table and talk down the price. All right. And, uh, you know, you get this classic car, you ride around in it, you look pretty in it for about a year. All right. And then you take a look at the market here in about a year, six months. You, you sell it and you flip it. All right. Or better yet, if you don't want to do that, let's say you're worried about the taxes on that. Let's say, oh, it goes to the taxes. You know, car flipping's great, but uh, you, uh, the taxes. Well, uh, go get the car, ride around in it for a little bit, even add on to it if necessary, and then take a loan on it if necessary. You understand? <laughs> take a loan on the car. You got it as collateral. I mean, the, the bank is going to take the car as collateral, all right? I mean, do you understand what I'm saying? This is what it's all about, baby. It's about making capital. It's about making money, for Christ's sake. Don't be just sitting there playing with your pecker shaft. Everything that you do has to be something tied to making some capital. If you want to be a rich person, if you want to, you know, sip on uh, Johnny Walker Blue Label, if you want to puff on Opus X uh, uh, cigars, if you want to live the lavish life, uh, if you want a penthouse in Austin, Texas, or wherever the hell you live, you're going to have to always think about every time you spend your money, all right? Every time you spend your money, you have to think about, am I going to be able to buy something that's going to be able to give me a return or at least liquidate it to face value or a little less than? I mean, don't blow your money on crap. I mean, all these people, man, Jesus Christ, they're blowing their money on these electronics. You know, these six, $700 damn phones, for Christ's sake, man. You're never going to be able to get that back. Uh, you're going to use and abuse. You're going to drop it on the floor. It's going to crack. There's going to be all kinds of damage to it. You're never going to get anything back on that on that investment. All right? I mean, it's the same thing with, uh, you know, you people out here who continuously buy these ridiculous clothing uh, lines that are just way overpriced. Oh, my God, way overpriced. Are you kidding me? I mean, $150 for jeans. You're never going to get... 150 you're not even going to get $50 for those jeans, for Christ's sake. All right, I mean, you're just burning money. Stop burning money, all right? Stop burning money. Jesus Christ. Anyway, let me continue going. We got copper today up, you know, and the reason we saw it up once again, copper's prices is directly correlated uh, to the equities market. I mean, if you see an increase in retail, uh, in manufacturing, and uh, uh, manufacturers who produce durable goods, <coughs> excuse me, durable goods, you're going to see an increase in copper. The increase is a dollar forty-five today, a percentage increase of 0.41 percent on the day for copper. And uh, let me tell you, as emerging markets continue to flourish, I know it doesn't look good based upon this European nonsense that we're witnessing in Europe. I mean, we're systematically seeing the implosion of goddamn socialism. Uh, but let me tell you something right now. As these other emerging markets uh, begin to flourish and begin to industrialize themselves, there is going to be a tremendous demand for copper in the long term. All right? A tremendous uh, demand for copper in the long term in my perspective. So uh, I'm not saying I'm hopping on that bandwagon just yet, but, uh, of course, you can also buy copper bullion, folks. Believe it or not, you can actually buy copper bars and copper kilos. Uh, believe it or not, uh, you know, when this copper bubble, because there's going to be a copper bubble, in my personal opinion, within the next several years as these emerging markets uh, from across the international community begin to industrialize. I mean, they need to lay down, uh, they need to lay down uh, networks. They need to lay down, uh, you know, cable lines. They need to lay down... Uh, phone lines, uh, they're going to purchase uh, durable goods that utilize copper, so on and so forth. So uh, the demand for copper is going to and rise, in my opinion. I think that uh, long term it looks pretty good in my view. Uh, let's continue going. we got gold uh, down today, $3.10, major volatility in gold because of the volatility in the equities markets today. I mean, literally, we were down about 150 points. And then we close up 100 points. It's unbelievable, mad volatility in the equities markets. It's definitely a day trader's uh, market, if you happen to be a day trader. Uh, but most folks that are investing aren't because they don't have the minimum $50,000 in the brokerage account that you legally need. That's right, you legally need $50,000 in your brokerage account so you can day trade and partake in pattern trading 
thanks to Mr. Yes We Can, for Christ's sake, because, oh, we're protecting you. Jesus Christ. Anyway, we've got uh, gold down, once again, $3.10, a percentage decrease of 0.17%, closing out gold at $1,788 per troy ounce of gold. But look at silver. Silver is up modestly today, even amidst gold sell-off. Silver is up 14 cents, a percentage increase of 0.42%, closing out silver at $34.95 per troy ounce of silver, baby. And let me tell you something. I think that these uh, prices are good. All right? I mean, even if they, you know, go down a little bit because of the damn uh, helter-skelter market that we're in, I think that this is, these prices are good. I'm accumulating it in my personal uh, hoard, in my personal possession, for Christ's sake. I mean, and that's all there is to it, all right? I mean, I'm accumulating silver. I mean, I still have gold also, I'm, I'm, but I'm not accumulating it as much as silver at this point in time, all right? I think silver is in a bull market, if you want my personal opinion, all right? Anyway, let's go to livestock, shall we? We've got live cattle futures down today, 25 cents, a percentage decrease of 0.20% on the day. Cattle feeder futures are down 97 cents today. A percentage decrease of 0.66%, and for all you fat jelly ass assholes that like a couple, uh, like a shove a couple of hambones down your damn gullet. Lean hog futures are down today, 35 cents, a percentage decrease of 0.41%. So for all you fat jelly ass greasy hambones, it looks like. Shoving a couple of ham bones down your gullet is not going to, you know, make your pocket uh, that much more uh, less fat, if you will, because they're down today. Anyway, that, my friends, is the markets for your ass. <laughs> anyway, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. Once again, retweet the broadcast. And uh, I hate to even ask the engineer, but... Uh, you know, speaking of tweets, uh, do we have any Twitter shout-outs to give Engineer, for Christ's sake? All right, we got a couple of Twitter shout-outs to make. And uh, for you folks that are unfamiliar, if you want a shout-out right here, right now on the True Capitalist Radio broadcast, well, by God, you got to go retweet the first tweet on my Twitter account. All right? Retweet the first tweet on my Twitter account, and of course, the Twitter account is Ghost Politics. All one word, no underscores, baby. All right. And uh, with that said, let's just go ahead and uh, let's say some Twitter shoutouts right now. All right, who we got here? Uh, we've got uh, Poverty is Funny. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ, you assholes. Poverty is funny, you idiot. Uh, the Poe in America are funny, but third world poverty is not funny, you jerk dicks. All right, assholes uh, that are laughing at uh, third world poverty. You definitely need a good uh, swift kick to the nutsack at least several times, you stupid dumb assholes. Jesus Christ. Anyway, we got poop masseuse. Jesus Christ. I mean, you people are already getting sick. You're already getting sick, for Christ's sake. I'm giving you an opportunity for Twitter shout-outs, and you're already getting goddamn twisted. Jesus Christ. We got Free Zorg, Lord Forest One. Uh, we've got, uh, who is this? That Ghost Dude, uh, Grenade Plasma. Uh, we've got Beatings for Bronies. That's pretty funny. Uh, who the hell? Do we have any more engineer, for Christ's sake? Because I'm telling you, these goddamn uh, Twitter shout-outs are starting to piss me off. Do we have any more? All right, we've got a couple of more here. we got some idiot named My Little Ghosty. Uh, we've got uh, Group Poop. Happy B-Day Ghost. It's not my birthday, asshole. Uh, top Badge. Uh, who else we got? Uh, we got... Uh, Occupy Starfleet. Jesus Christ, you sick son of a bitches. Occupy Starfleet. You're real funny, huh? Yeah, yeah, real funny. It's a Star Trek reference. <laughs> Stupid dorks. Uh, we got Capitalist Chris in the house. Derp face in the place. 
Uh, we got uh, Occupy Asho. Uh, we've got Troll. Uh, we've got uh, the Whore Master in the house. I haven't seen you in a long time there, the Whore Master. Jesus Christ. Uh, we've got uh, He's Got Mangina. Uh, Banjo the Bear. Uh, we got Occupy Uranus. Uh, who else we got? We got the manly lesbian back, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. Uh, we've got uh, a brony beater in the place. What's going on, a brony beater? Uh, who the hell else we got? I'm just going to give a couple of more, and that's about it. All right? A couple of more, and that's about it, for Christ's sake, because these are getting a little sick. We got Jim9349. What's going on? Uh, we've got Hot Deals in Italy. Uh, we've got uh, Super Mario Brony. Uh, we got some idiot named Jew Circumcision. That's horrible, you sick son of a bitch. You actually made a goddamn Twitter account. I mean, it's just, that, that's it. That's it. That, engineer, just just get this crap off my screen. I'm not giving any more shout-outs to these idiots. You got it? Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, let's go ahead and get right into the first uh, part of the broadcast. I mean, shall we? Now... As we have heard, this disgusting, ridiculous, modern-day media lynching happening to my man, Herman Sugarcane, by all these so-called, uh, you know, ditzy bimbos claiming that, oh, he sexually harassed me. It's not fair. What did I say? I don't know if it was the last program, but the program before that. What did I say about these Herman Cain accusers? I said that if it isn't a minority, all right, it's probably some blonde, ditzy bimbo that some ditzy, bubbly, you know, uh, disgusting whore bag that probably has plastic surgery on her face that makes her look a little bit like a burn victim. And for you idiots that don't uh, believe me that I said that, look back in the archive, blogtalkradio.com slash ghost, all right? It's exactly what I said. And lo and behold, lo and behold, who comes out here for Christ's sake? Huh? <laughs> who comes out here but this disgusting, uh, disgraceful, single mother just filed for bankruptcy looking to score a book deal or looking to score some uh, lucrative interviews or paying interviews type whore bag named Sharon Bialik. Sharon Bialik, for Christ's sake, came out. And, of course, who did she come out with? That disgusting skunk, Gloria Allred. All right? That disgusting, soulless cash whore. This disgusting, sniveling trash. This 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 soulless cash bimbo that's out here that loves extorting men for money because, oh, well, you know, you said something about her breast, and that, that requires a million dollars. Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, before we get into anything, uh, I, I mean, I know I've been gone for a little bit here, but this Herman Cain smear campaign, this modern-day media lynching that's happening here by the liberal media, and let me tell you something right now, it's definitely a smear campaign. It's definitely a left-wing liberal media conspiracy. And for all you idiots that are going to sit here and say, Oh, yeah, yeah you're funny, Ghost. You're, you're out of line. That's not true. Oh, yeah? How come you're not seeing any of these violent Occupy Wall Street protests? Yeah, they're getting violent all over America. Huh? Out there in Oakland. Out there in Atlanta. They're even getting violent out here in Austin, Texas. How come you don't see those union, acorn-inspired violent protests on the media plastered all over the goddamn boob tube? How come, you don't, how come you don't hear about those negative aspects of this disgusting vagabond revolution? Huh? How come you don't hear about that? Oh, but you got this sensationalistic, disgusting, pathetic smear campaign by... Uh, the the liberal media against Herman Cain, and let me tell you something right now. The reason that the, this liberal media is trying to go all out with this smear campaign on my man, 
Herman Sugar Cane is because they know that this man is a sincere threat to Obama's 2012 campaign. All right? You know it, and I know it. All right? You know it, and I know it. This is why the media is, I mean, this is hyper-sensational journalism, man. I mean, this has no bearing on whether or not Herman Cain is going to be an actual good president, all right? This has no bearing whatsoever, but the sensationalism of it. Oh, the media is just going to, it's just all over it, for Christ's sake, all over it. Even believe in this disgusting, despicable whorebag. The hell's this bitch's name for Christ's sake? Sharon Bialik. They're even, you know, sitting here putting this bimbo on a pedestal. And look at her, for Christ's sake. She looked exactly what I described before she even stepped foot on that podium. And let me tell you something right now. This disgusting bimbo. Did you see her on that podium, for Christ's sake? I mean, did, did y'all happen to see this disgusting, d ditzy bimbo on that podium describing the so-called sexual encounter, or the, 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 the sexual misconduct encounter with Herman Sugar Cane? Did y'all hear this crap? Huh? Jesus Christ. And not only that, what are y'all doing off of chat room martial law? Put him back on chat room martial law, engineer. God damn it. What are you doing? We'll do it! I'm not going to sit over here and allow these people to flap their fat Dorito-stained fingers on the keyboard talking malarkey at me for Christ's sake. If they want to talk to somebody, they can talk to their stupid, fat, jelly-ass selves for Christ's sake. Anyway, I don't want to get sidetracked by these milky liquors in the damn chat room here. But did you hear this Sharon Bialik talk about the supposed sexual misconduct alleged against Herman Sugarcane. Did y'all hear this? Did y'all hear it? As a matter of fact, do, you know, engineer, do your job for a change. How about that, asshole? Do it, your goddamn job, and why don't you pull up the Sharon Bialik clip? Do you got that? Well, get it up there and get it on the air, for Christ's sake. Sitting over here, have these people off of chat room martial law. These people will be off chat room martial law when I say they'll be off chat room martial law. Do you understand that? Yes, Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, before... I know I'm getting off keister, I'm sorry. All right, but I'm just getting a little pissed off here. All right, because this is a, this is a liberal media modern-day lynching of Herman Cain here, and it's a disgusting disgrace. Anyway, did y'all hear what this stupid skankosaurus said? Did you hear? Huh? All right, you got it, engineer? Yeah, yeah. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, let you listen to the account of Sharon Bialik. All right, this is off the Associated Press. Sharon Bialik describing the so-called traumatic encounter with Herman Cain. Oh, Jesus Christ. Go ahead and roll it, engineer. Jesus Christ. I thought that we were going to go into the offices so that he could show me around. At that time, I had on a black pleated skirt, a suit jacket, and a blouse. He had on a suit with his shirt, op with his shirt open. But instead of going into the offices, he suddenly reached over, and he put his hand on my leg, <coughs> under my skirt, and reached for my genitals. He also grabbed my head and brought it towards his crotch. I was very, very surprised and very shocked. I said, what are you doing? I, you know I have a boyfriend. This isn't what, what? I came here for. What? Mr. Well, King well, said, you want a job. Did everybody hear that? Did everybody hear that for Christ's sake? Now, let me tell you, if you're a woman listening to the broadcast right now, all right, and, you know, somebody basically just, basically, you know, uh, started fondling your J and, you know, grabbed you by the head and started directing you towards their crotch area, would your reaction be in, uh, what are you doing? I got a boyfriend. I mean, would that be your reaction? Or would you give a goddamn Dusty Rhodes bionic elbow right to the sack and make sure that this idiot was very well aware with that, that not only were you not digging this disgusting, unwanted uh, sexual advancement, but, you know, you're going to give him a little pain for being such a sleaze bag, for Christ's sake. 
But no, that's not what happened here, huh? That's not what happened. Her reaction was, "Why? Well, why are you doing this? I, 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 I got a boyfriend." You know what that means to me? If we want to believe that this story is even valid, because according to Herman Cain, he doesn't even know this bitch. You know what I mean? I mean, when asked about uh, Mr. Cain, um, do you know Sharon Bilek and the claims that she's alleged against you? I mean, straight up, Herman Cain said, I don't even know this bitch, man. Straight up. He don't even know this broad. All right, but let's just say that he, let's say that this broad is, what she's saying is, is supposedly half-ass valid. Why exactly is she saying, um, I got a boyfriend. Why are you doing anything in here? Uh, why would she be saying that? I'll tell you what that is code for. That's code for, hey, um, I'm not going to do this unless I get paid. That's what that means, all right? Any other woman uh, that had any kind of self-respect for herself would literally have given this idiot a, a, just a, a swift punch to the nutsack, all right? Literally, just, you stupid, just boom, right there to the nuts, all right? And say, hey, I'm not that kind of girl asshole, and just walked out of the car and then, you know, I don't know called, called the family, called her brother or somebody, all right? But that's not what happened here, all right? That's not what happened. Moreover, uh, do you know the context of the supposed meeting of these two people? According to her, she had gotten laid off or fired from the National Restaurant Association. As, I don't know what the hell she did there. But believe it or not, she got in contact with Herman Cain and said she was going to fly to Washington to meet him, to have dinner with him so they can discuss a quote-unquote uh, job-related situation. Uh, he, he, she was going out there, taking a flight, going out there, probably reserving a damn hotel room, the whole nine yards, to supposedly have some kind of dinner with Herman Cain to talk about, um, you need to help me get a job. I mean, what are you expecting, you, you, you stupid slut bag? Jesus Christ, I mean, who in the hell is going to fly out and I don't believe this broad for a minute, but just, just, I mean, you have to understand the context of everything. I mean, even if what she said was true, is it really sexual harassment? I mean, she wasn't even working for the company. You know what I mean? Moreover, she flew down there and basically had dinner with the guy. And then after the, after the dinner, he just basically tapped her on the head and said, hey, uh, you know, do your job. You know, you know, I know she said so. Hold on, hold on. Let's listen to the rest of that. Let's listen, listen to the rest of Sharon Violet's I thought that we were going to go into the offices that he could turn me around. At that time, I had on a black pleated skirt, a suit jacket, and a blouse. He had on a suit with his shirt op with his shirt open. But instead of going into the offices, he suddenly reached over and he put his hand on my leg. <laughs> under my skirt and reached for my genitals. He also grabbed my head and brought it towards his crotch. I was very, very surprised and very shocked. I said, what are you doing? I, you know I have a boyfriend. This isn't what I came here for. Mr. Kane said, you want a job, right? I asked him to stop and he did. I asked him to take me back to my hotel, which he, he did right away. When I returned to New Jersey where I was staying with my boyfriend that Mr. Kane had been I told when I was staying when I returned back to New Jersey where I was staying, I told my boyfriend sexually inappropriate with me and shortly thereafter I told another friend of mine who has been a mentor the same thing. I didn't tell them the details because quite frankly I was very embarrassed uh, that Mr. Kane had been sexually inappropriate to me. I mean this is just horrible. Did everybody hear this? This is the so-called accuser that's coming out public, for Christ's sake, that the media is claiming is going to derail the meteoric rise of Herman Cain. I mean, it's done nothing but fuel the fire to the Herman Cain train. Let me tell you something. Ever since that I endorsed Herman Cain, he's gone nothing but up. Do you understand? And the reason is, folks, is because I know for a fact that this man can beat Barack Obama. Because the Trump card that the Barack Obama and the David Axelrod mastermind out there in the campaign of Barack Obama, their Trump card is the race card. That's right, the race card, for Christ's sake, you know? I mean, you're, you saw it in 2008, all right? You saw it in 2008. If you're against Obama, you're a racist. Oh, if you're 
against stimulus package too? You're a racist. Oh, you're, you're a racist. You're a racist. Well, let me tell you something. If Herman Cain is running for president, what are they going to do now? Huh? Where are they going to run? Are they going to run on Obama's record? Now they're going to run on Obama's uh, foreign policy, for Christ's sake. I mean, you know, uh, we're going to talk about later how one of the people uh, that was actually involved with the Osama bin Laden uh, plot assassination, well, actually it wasn't a plot assassination, it was actually a uh, uh, capture alive uh, special forces operation. But one of the guys that was in there saying, uh, uh, basically said in a book, and he's going to be on Don Imus tomorrow for all you folks that uh, actually listen to morning. Uh, morning radio, uh, he's going to be interviewed tomorrow, and basically he states in the book that uh, Barack Obama uh, had the choice on whether or not to, you know, basically keep quiet about the Osama bin Laden assassination so that the special forces could obtain more intel and more data about, uh, you know, the whole infrastructure of al-Qaeda on a global scale. But instead, according to uh, this uh, special forces guy, uh, and his name is uh, Chuck Farr. Chuck Farr is this. Uh, he was, uh, you know, part of the team that uh, was uh, involved in the Bin Laden raid uh, that led to Bin Laden's killing. Uh, he said, on the contrary, instead of uh, Barack Obama, the president, uh, basically allowing the special forces to keep this quiet and obtaining more intel on the Al Qaeda operation, he decided to go out and go public with the uh, killing of Osama Bin Laden, so that. He can basically take the credit for political gain. I mean, it's just, it's just disgusting. It's disgraceful. All right, so you know, it's it's it, it makes no co it's no coincidence whatsoever why we have such a liberal media bias, and it's obvious in the way the news is delved out out here in the mainstream media. I mean, we, we we see Herman Cain all over the place. You know, Herman Cain uh, is denying the allegations of this. And yeah, 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 he's denying that. And lo and behold, are they covering these violent Occupy Wall Street protests that are happening all across the country? Yeah, they're getting violent. They're getting violent, for Christ's sake. And the reason they're getting violent, folks, is because, oh, the unions are involved. The same unions that helped get Barack Obama elected. The people that are organizing these events are the same people that were affiliated with ACORN. Yeah, the same organization that committed voter fraud to put uh, Barack Obama into power. All right, so don't give me that crap. Anyway, we, we've pretty much uh, delved into both uh, subject matters. I want to hear from you. From you, what do you, what do you got to say about it? Either or, Herman Cain and the modern-day media lynching smear campaign that the liberal media is putting upon his campaign, or uh, if you have something to say about uh, Chuck Farr, uh, the man that was involved in the special forces, in, uh, he was supposed to capture bin Laden, but instead they shot him because he was reaching for a gun, uh, according to this uh, man. And according to him, the reason that... Uh, the killing of Osama bin Laden went public so quick was because Barack Obama wanted to utilize it for political gain, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. Anyway, let, let's get to the calls here. Let me, let, me, let me have a drink first because I know I'm going to have a bunch of ass clowns sitting here trying to deviate the conversation. And I wouldn't be surprised if half these goddamn trolls are sitting here calling me, uh, you know, talking a bunch of malarkey, saying four-letter words. Talking garbage. I wouldn't be surprised if these people are, are not paid by the DNC themselves, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ, let me have a drink here. Yeah, good stuff. Anyway, folks, I want to hear from you. 646-652-4869 is the number to call. I, I want to hear. I want to hear from you. All right? I, I want to hear from you right now. What do you think about either one of these? I mean, you know as well as I that this broad, Sharon Bialik, is a lion whore, in my view. I mean, just by looking at her, all right? She looks like a burn victim, for Christ's sake. I mean, two words, single mother, huh? But moreover, she just filed for bankruptcy, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. Anyway, I want to hear from you. 646-652-4869 is the number to call. Let's go ahead and take some callers right now and see if anybody has anything insightful to say. Uh, instead of uh, playing with their Peter Poppers and talking a bunch of malarkey, all right? Let's go ahead and take a call here. Uh, who do we got? Uh, area code 713. What's up? You're on the horn. 
Uh, you're playing with your Peter Popper for Christ's sake. 661, what's up? You're on the horn. Surgeradio.org. So what? Uh, you, you, got, you got a pissing ground website. Who doesn't? Uh, 503, what's up? Lucy, oh boy, how have you been? Who the hell is this? Oh, I don't know. I was just, oh, it was the one who called a while ago about Obama and whatnot. I, uh, I don't wondering. really care. You, say, you know what? You sound too fruity to be on this broadcast anyway, so get that. Get him off, engineer, for Christ's sake. You don't want to sit over here and listen to this over, overly fruity-ass gay bastard. 260, what's up? You're on the horn. Well, I guess I'd have to say about the um, Occupy Wall Street area, they say that there are all these college students, but how can that be right? I mean, if they're college students, why aren't they in college, you know? Well, no, 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 no. let me explain there, 260. A lot of these people are ex-college students, and they haven't graduated in actually getting a job because they're pissed off that their little stupid degree that they obtained for $90,000 on a student loan is not useful in the employment market. And because they're not getting the job that they went to school for, they're not going and getting any job. So, you know, that's all there is to it. They're lazy pricks. They don't want to be obligated to their student loans. And that's who's out there in Occupy Wall Street 260. All right, get it straight. All right, there's nothing but a bunch of ass clowns that are out there that don't want to be on the bill for the damn student loans that they put out themselves. That's all there is to it. I mean, it's a vagabond revolution, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. Who else we got? 561, you're on the horn. Um, hey, guys. How do you think the allegations of Herman Cain are just completely ridiculous and unfounded? I mean using this against him rather than just arguing against his politics. I mean, I've always been more of a Ron Paul guy, but, I mean, Herman Cain would be fine, too, if he got elected. Of course he would be fine. I mean, you know, look, I mean, look at the man's economic policy, for Christ's sake. I mean, it would be a breath of fresh air, especially an earner like myself, somebody who knows how to make, generate large sums of capital. 999 would be unbelievable. I mean, you know, no more 40% capital gains tax, no more inheritance tax. You know, no more of these dumbass, you know, stupid, pathetic federal taxes any longer, for Christ's sake. Just straight, flat 9%. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just unbelievable. It's great. Uh, I love it. Uh, but, I mean, I think you're right there, 561. I think this is a complete and utter smear campaign. That's all it is. These long-haired liberal bedwetting hippies know that uh, the uh, person that they elected into power, you know, the people that they elected into power, this this Barack Hussein Obama, he, his uh, days are numbered because Herman Cain is going to take away the Trump card of Barack Obama. He's going to just take it away. He's going to take it away, for Christ's sake. And you got David Axelrod and Barack Obama running for cover. That's what they're doing. They're running for goddamn cover, and I don't blame them, boy. I don't blame them. But let me tell you something. These media outlets, and I'm talking about scumbag communist news network, CNN, I'm talking about Bull Dyke MSNBC with that disgusting, despicable Muff Dive and Rachel Maddow. I'm talking about all these media outlets that are out here hyper-sensationalizing this story. You people know that you're in the tank for Obama. You wouldn't be basically amplifying these disgusting, sensationalist stories if you weren't. I mean, if you were actual journalists... You stupid idiots would be covering the Occupy Wall Street protests that are getting violent out here. They're getting violent. They're getting violent out here. But is uh, any of the mainstream media folks, are they are they covering that? No. You want to know why they're not covering the violence of Occupy Wall Street? Because the unions are involved. And, oh, we don't want to paint a bad picture to the unions. Oh, of course not. Are you kidding me? I mean, unions are a modern-day mob. I mean, do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, they're just extorting money off of uh, companies, off of uh, sole proprietor businesses. It's disgraceful. It's utterly disgraceful what these unions are doing. And let me tell you something. That's why this president doesn't want the uh, <clears throat> Occupy Wall Street protest to have any kind of a goddamn tarnish on it. Because remember, he's the one who acknowledged these goddamn protests. 
He acknowledged them by name for Christ's sake. So inevitably, he's going to take the fall if these goddamn protests get really, really violent and they are directly correlated with the unions, which they are, all right? They are. But anyway, let's continue going. Let's take some more calls here. 646-652-4869 is the number to call. We got uh, area code 646. What's up? You're on the horn. Stupid idiot. 215. What's up? You're on the horn. Yeah, we got another deaf mute for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ, you you hung on for about an hour, and you, you and you're just gonna be a deaf mute for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ, how about PJC two point zero? You're on the horn. See another deaf mute for Christ's sake. I'm gonna stop taking calls if you idiots are just gonna be deaf mutes. All right, I'll talk for three hours. I don't give a crap. All right, <laughs> I don't give a crap. Area code 586, you're on the horn. Hi, Ghost. Love you in Michigan, and shout out to my boyfriend, Jeff. Hey, cool. Hey, Jeff, there's your girlfriend right there saying a shout out. Huh? Pretty cool. Uh, I'm sure all these lonely idiots that are flapping their fat text warrior chat fingers on the keyboard are probably saying to themselves, Oh, I wish I was Jeff. I'm just some lonely, fat bastard that's a troll jerk dick that gets off on trolling Facebook pages and and, and, and making stupid little troll organizations like Gink, 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 Shut Up! All right, who else we got going on over here? 860, what's up? Hello? Yeah, goodbye, you fruit bowl. 412, what's up? Hey, what's going on, Ghost? Two quick things for you. Uh, first of all, for I just wanted to re- I just wanted to remind everybody that Acorn is the organization that was caught on tape helping uh, an undercover pimp fucking set up a an underage whorehouse and get the government to pay for it. That's the first thing. And uh, yeah, that, that, that was the uh, that was the uh, the Acorn findings by uh, those two young journalists. I can't believe I forgot their names. O'Keefe. Well, yeah, that, that that young kid O'Keefe, he's the one who uncovered the Acorn uh, uh, the, the scandal about uh, Acorn directing pimps, or he was actually dressed up like a pimp, and he actually had a, a female come in with him acting like his underage uh, prostitute, and Acorn was actually guiding them on how to maneuver through the bureaucratic government system so that they can legitimize their prostitution business. And this is all caught on tape. You can look at it on YouTube. But, uh, yeah, that was that was damning. And let me tell you something right now. Uh, this organization, ACORN, was not only uh, the organization that did that, but they were the organizing organization that inevitably had some of these uh, inconspicuous voter counts in some of these uh, precincts that were inevitably necessary to lead to Barack Obama's election in 2008. Let's not forget that there are a bunch of anomalies uh, of voter registration that were related to ACORN uh, that, you know, let's be honest, I mean, they, 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 uh, they, they were dead people that were voting. I mean, they, they, they were fraud. there was open fraud and precincts that were necessary for Barack Obama to get elected, and, uh, and nobody wants to talk about that. Now that ACORN is disbanded because the government cut their funding, so on and so forth, now you've got the hierarchy of this nonprofit or supposed nonprofit out there organizing the protest of Occupy Wall Street all over the country. So this is a disgusting, despicable, mob-like organization, and uh, why, uh, you know, federal authorities aren't looking at these people as potential terrorists to the country, I have no idea. Yeah, it's fucked up because, you know, they want to, government wants to put their hands everywhere and regulate everything, yet shit like that goes untouched, and meanwhile the evidence is extremely blatant and everywhere. But um, the other thing I wanted to mention is, you know, I, I really hope 999 does go into effect. I mean, the the economy would absolutely explode, and all these job problems would not – There, it would just be null and void. Like, there would be so many jobs created because – It would it would know. lower the, the corporate tax structure. I mean, it, it would lower the personal income tax. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, and, and, and what's so beautiful about it is by lowering taxes all around – you actually increase the base with the 9% sales tax. So all the losses that would be incurred by cutting the taxes on the corporate and personal income tax in is going to be made up on the 9% sales tax. 
And, of course, the 9% sales tax isn't going to pertain uh, to used goods. So I think that used goods also is going to be a flourishing business to an already kind of a depleted economy. So uh, you're absolutely right. I think I see nothing but good economics as it relates to 999. And uh, and moreover, if you happen to fall under certain zones of poverty, uh, you know, you can also possibly not have to pay any 9% income taxes, which actually helps the poor even more. So there should be no reason why uh, this easy, feasible transition of tax code should not be implemented. Oh, absolutely. And it, w- it would cut out all the bullshit loopholes that all these assholes get by on. And it, you know, I, I just don't see any negatives whatsoever. Absolutely not, man. Hey, thanks a lot for calling, man. I appreciate your commentary, but you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I mean, you know, uh, Acorn was the same organization tied to that uh, James O'Keefe story. That's what it was, James O'Keefe. And, uh, you know, James O'Keefe went undercover as a pimp uh, with a a, a female reporter with him that acted like a prostitute, and they actually had Acorn employees on tape, on videotape, showing them how to bypass the government bureaucratic regulations to legitimize their prostitution business. Not only to legitimize their prostitution business, but how to legally finagle the immigration status of certain underage prostitutes so that they can be pimped out. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's disgusting, really. And this is the same organization that's involved with Occupy Wall Street. Unfreaking believable. But once again, uh, you don't hear that on the mainstream media. You don't hear the uh, violent protests, these protests that are turning violent out here and Occupy protests all across the country. You don't hear that crap on the mainstream media, do you? No. You see this plastic-faced burn victim, Sharon Bialik, out here saying, Oh, he put his hand on my legs and tried to touch my genitals. And then he put his hand on my head and forced it down on his crotch. And I asked him, what are you doing? I've got a boyfriend. I'm like, Jesus Christ, who says that crap? Who says that crap? I mean, if you're a female listening in, would you say that? Would you? I mean, you know, somebody is, you know, trying to fondle your vajayjay, trying to put your head in his crotch, and you're going to sit there and say, oh, my God, a boyfriend. And that's what you're going to say, for Christ's sake? Jesus Christ. Horrible. Horrible. It, she's lying her ass. She's a, she's a lying, filthy broad, and that's my opinion, all right? But, of course, you know, the, the American goddamn public ain't going to see that on the mainstream media. They're just going to sit out there and overly produce this sensationalism, all right? It's all it is, sensationalism. I mean, what about Barack Obama's past a little bit? How about that? I mean, how come when when he was running for president, we didn't hear about this man, you know, snorting lines of cocaine that, you know, would otherwise be given to Sam Kinison? How about that? How about we talk about, uh, you know, Barack Obama's affiliation with uh, Marxists and, uh, you know, all all these uh, separatists and so on and so on. We didn't didn't talk about any, any of that. We didn't talk anything about that during that election, right? That's why I'm saying, folks, this is a left-wing conspiracy, all right? This is a goddamn left-wing conspiracy, and the media is in the tank for Obama. That's why they're hyper-sensationalizing this disgusting modern-day media lynching via this sexual misconduct nonsense, all right? It's utter crap, all right? It's utter garbage. Anyway, I want to hear from you one more time. What do you think about it? Area code 314. You're on the horn. My name is Pinky. Hello. Stupid dumb brony. 801, what's up? Yeah, sit there and shut your ass for Christ's sake, you dumb deaf mute. Go to Helen Keller School or some crap. 905, you're on the horn. <laughs> I mean, we can't even understand you, you dumbass, all right? I mean, this is what we get by putting computers in the projects, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, Stimulus Package 2, not only did it, 
you know, basically just piss away a trillion dollars. But the project's now got Wi-Fi, and, you know, if the Poe happened to have some kind of a computer they got from the Swap Meet or Salvation Army or something of that nature, uh, they can get free Wi-Fi now if they live in the projects, baby. Oh, yeah, are you kidding me? And, you know, you can tell by, you know, some of the... Some of the audio quality of people's phones, who those people are, all right? Anyway, who else do we got here? We got uh, Tails1198. You're on the horn. Yo, hey, Ghost. First time listening to the show, man. Awesome job. Appreciate everything you're doing, dude. Um, First off, I don't understand what these Occupy Wall Street people are trying to do. I mean, basically, they just want us to be a government where we just hand out free shit every day. You know, they just want us to hand out free health care. Just look at the guy who went to McDonald's. And, you know, through a fit because they wouldn't give his ass free food. I mean, is that the kind of country we become where people just become fucking lazy? That's what they want. I mean, that's what the whole protest is about. It's a bum revolution. It's people that want to do absolutely nothing but watch cartoons and smoke marijuana all day and have no responsibilities whatsoever. And what's really unfortunate is that this kind of idea, this type of mentality has already been practiced in Europe, and we are right now witnessing the systematic collapse of the socialist model in Europe. And and as we're witnessing it collapse, we're slowly transitioning it here. We're transitioning to it right here incrementally, for Christ's sake. And you've got people begging for it. They're begging. I, I just cannot believe these Occupy Wall Street idiots. They're begging Big Brother government to put them into goddamn bondage. They're it's saying, exactly. please, please give me a, a loaf of bread. Uh, p- please give me a bowl of soup. I mean, I mean, these people want to be subjects of the state. It's disgusting. I mean, this has got to be some sort of a historic event. It must be the zombie apocalypse. I mean, who wants to be a subject of the state, man? I mean, hell, I wouldn't want to be. I mean, I give you an example. You know, I I applaud Herman Cain. I actually hope he gets elected to nine nine nine. I actually think it's a damn good idea. I mean, give you an example. I'm in college right now, and I just got my next paycheck, where my company actually paid for me to go to school. Almost three quarters of my paycheck is gone in taxes. Absolutely, I mean, you're a single young man, right? Exactly. Yeah, I live on my own. I go to college, and this is my last year of it. I mean, and isn't that unfair? That you know, here you are. Not only are you supporting. Uh, the po in America, the so-called po, the po, the the poor people that are waddling around fat in every so-called impoverished area in America, but you're also helping to subsidize, uh, which an article came out recently stating that the 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 wealth gap between the old and the young is tremendous. I mean, it's just unbelievable. You're helping subsidize the baby boomer generation that helped put us in this predicament to begin with by paying for Social Security that you're never going to see by paying for Medicaid and Medicare that you're never going to see. And, and what are these uh, old people doing? They're getting free Viagra. They're getting free hover rounds so they can you know, be in those stupid motor scooters in the shopping malls and the shopping centers out here. And, and this is what you're doing. I mean, all this, I mean, people like you, responsible young individuals like you, well-educated, well-articulate individuals like you should be out there pissed I mean, you should be out there, uh, you know, spreading the word about capitalism and telling these young, disgusting vagabonds that want to do nothing, hey, I don't want to live your stupid world of, uh, you know, just letting the government take control of my body, let the government uh, figure out when I'm going to eat, what I'm going to eat, how I'm going to eat, what I'm going to do. This is what these people want. I mean, this is not what this country was built on. This country was built upon the individual carving out their own destiny. And if we somehow uh, evolve into some sort of state-run, totalitarian, brave new world concept, because these idiots are willingly allowing it to happen, I refuse to sit here and, uh, you know, allow that to happen without fighting against it, in my personal opinion. Damn straight, damn straight. I even worked in a pharmacy before, and I can tell you, there are people coming on Medicaid, um, not Medicaid, I'm sorry, Medicare coming for getting Viagra. I've seen people come through a drive through when I was still working there in a Hummer H3 on Medicare and Medicaid. And I mean, when you see them, you know, you know, brand, uh, brand new cars like this, you're going, what the hell? You know, I grew up in, in out in the country. None of my family graduated from high school. I'm probably the only, the only one, except for my cousins, that actually done it. I've made a lot of progress in my damn short years here. In this world, and I'm not going to be stopped by you know these people that want handouts. If you want, if it is something Herman Cain said, if you're not rich or you don't have what you want, it's your own damn fault. You're goddamn right, and you know what, Tails, you should be proud of yourself for all the achievements that you've achieved. 
Because let me tell you something, nobody is going to be proud of you more than yourself. All right? I mean, even if you're trying to get adulation of mommy, daddy, uh, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever the case might be, inevitably nobody's going to do as much and going to be as proud as yourself uh, or proud of you as yourself. And inevitably you should have a certain level of, uh, I mean, a certain level of arrogance as it relates to the regular everyday schmuck in your demographic tales. Because the bottom line is, is that the majority of these young people don't want to do a goddamn thing. They don't want to do a goddamn thing. They want to do nothing. Nothing. When they can go out, and they're young, you know, when you're young, that's the time you go out and you work hard, you know, because you have the energy to do it. You know, that, that, that's when you go out and you, you work overtime, you, you, you stack your chips, you flip your chips. That's the time that you do it. These idiots don't want to do that. They just want to sit on their fat jelly asses and say, oh, I just want to bang on the drum, and yeah, I just want to bang on a drum all day long. It's stupid. It's pathetic, man. And it's good to hear young individuals like yourself that are taking pride, that have some integrity in yourselves, that know that you're better than this scum, that look at this disgusting scum and occupy Wall Street, no matter where you are in the country, and look down upon it for the disgusting ridiculousness that it is, for Christ's sake. I mean, these people out here are just begging Big Brother government to take control of their bodies, for Christ's sake, and they want to take us with them. I don't want to go with these stupid scumbags. I mean, if these stupid scumbags want to be subjects to the state, well, let them be subject to the state, but let's put them in a goddamn labor camp so that we can make sure that, uh, you know, all the money that we're spending to keep these idiots alive with food and sustenance and all this other nonsense, uh, we can at least get some of it back. You know, you know, recoup some of it back, for Christ's sake. I'm sick and tired of people thinking that they're entitled to something just because they exist, all right? I mean, it's just disgusting, you know, this hyper-sensationalist, hyper-romanticist idea that every human being is God's special creature, huh? Oh, yeah, every human being is God's special creature, for Christ's sake. That's garbage, all right? That is utter crap, and that's why we need capitalism throughout the international community, throughout the world, so that we can separate the weak from the wise and allow those individuals that actually have the motivation, that have the pride and the integrity to prosper and to progress, allow them to do so at their own behest, at their own individual prowess. And those that want to do nothing, those that just want to sit there and be dreads on society, moochers of civilization. Well, we should let whatever happened to them happen to them. Do you understand? It's the way of the world. I mean, take a look at every living organism on this planet. Every living organism on this planet has to kill and eat another living organism to survive. And the sooner you idiots realize that, the better off humanity is going to be. The great leap forward humanity is going to take, and, I mean, a new reality, a new idea, I mean, a new existence to our primitive thought process will ensue. Anyway, 646-652-4869, we've already gone over, once again, the Herman Cain smear campaign. Uh, we talked a little bit about how uh, Obama basically leaked out the Osama bin Laden uh, killing, the Osama bin Laden assassination, before they could gather intel on al-Qaeda. And this is according to one of the guys that was there, one of the guys that was part of the Special Forces team in Pakistan that killed Osama bin Laden, Chuck Farr. He's actually going to be on Don Imus tomorrow in the morning, if you happen to catch that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be catching it. I want to hear what this man has to say. But according to him... Uh, instead of Obama allowing the special forces to keep the uh, Osama bin Laden assassination quiet and gather intel on al-Qaeda, you had uh, Barack Obama basically just saying, uh, no, we're not going to do that. All right, We're going to go ahead and release the fact that Osama bin Laden's dead so that I can gain some credibi credibility politically. You know, That's all there is to it. Uh, we also uh, talked a little bit about the Occupy Wall Street protest turning violent. 
That's right. They're turning violent all over the country because, let's be honest, these people don't want to do anything. They want to do nothing. It's easier for them to be a bunch of chaotic, vagabond, bum losers than it is actually going out and working for a living and obtaining assets, for Christ's sake. Can you believe this crap? So they're getting violent all over the country, and is the media highlighting this at all? I mean, and if you folks don't believe me, take a look at the YouTube videos. All right? take, I mean, just look at them for yourselves. These idiots are getting violent, and there should be no reason for this. All right, No reason for this whatsoever. But the media is not highlighting this because, once again, who's tied to these Occupy Wall Street protests? The unions and acorn and if they get violent and the media highlights it well it's gonna you know have a little bit of a taint on the barack obama administration because barack obama acknowledged these damn vagabonds i mean he prides himself as being a president of the unions so they don't want to you know they don't want to do anything like that Anyway, let's talk a little bit about uh, Attorney General Eric Holder. Uh, did anybody see his testimony in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee today? Oh, my God. I mean, he was defiant, man. This asshole Eric Holder was defiant as it related to this uh, fast and the furious operation uh, that the ATF had conducted. And for you folks uh, that are unaware of what I'm speaking of, um, the bottom line is is uh, ATF, which is the uh, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, which answers directly, by the way, to the Attorney General, they partook in an operation called Operation Fast and the Furious, which inevitably allowed Mexican and South American drug lords to purchase guns, to purchase armory in America. You know, I mean, believe it or not, they, they set this up. They allowed these goddamn drug dealers to get thousands of guns. They sold it to them, all right? They sold it to them with the hopes of supposedly tracking where those guns went. Well, unfortunately, the ATF, uh, the, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms that sold these Mexican cartels these guns, well, they screwed up because they lost track of the guns. They didn't know where they went until they started showing up at, uh, you know, death scenes and, you know, these uh, drug wars in Mexico. Moreover, uh, some of these guns ended up at crime scenes in America. One in particular was uh, a death of a Border Patrol agent out there in Arizona. Yeah, one of these Fast and the Furious guns was out there at the freaking crime scene of a killing, of an actual murder of a Border Patrol agent, for Christ's sake, all right? I mean, this is serious. This is serious stuff. Well, anyway, um, the Senate Judiciary Committee. What, what, what's the yeah? Ju the Senate uh, Judiciary Committee decided to have Eric Holder to you know basically describe his side of the story. And believe it or not, this idiot was defi was defiant. Are you kidding me? He actually believes that there was nothing wrong. He said that maybe there were some miscalculations, and I'm paraphrasing, of course. He said maybe there were some miscalculations in, you know, some of the protocol of uh, what was going on in the operation. But still, the operation was a success. I mean, can you believe this crap? I mean, these guns that the alcohol, tobacco, and firearms gave to the Mexican drug cartels ended up at crime scenes at the death of Border Patrol agents, for Christ's sake. And this man, the Attorney General of the United States of America, has the audacity to sit here and call this a goddamn success? Oh, my God, are you kidding me? I mean, this is what I'm talking about, folks. This is why I'm saying this president has not one leg to stand on whatsoever. That's why you have the liberal media going after my man, my man, Herman Sugar Cane, baby. And let me tell you something right now, man. Herman Sugar Cane, he's bringing the pain. He's dodging those blows. I mean, he's dodging them. You know, they're dropping bows on him. They're dropping bows on him, but he's dodging it, baby. You know what I mean? He's moving like a butterfly. He's shaking like a bee. You know what I'm saying? And they're trying to drop bows on him, but he's shaking, baby. He's Herman Sugar Cane, baby. <laughs> Woo! Oh, my God. Anyway, I want to hear from
from you. Six four six six five two four eight six nine. What do you think about Eric Holder? What do you think about Eric Holder's testimony out here? His defiance. He was defiant. He actually think that Fast and the Furious operation was somehow beneficial uh, to the supposed war against these drug cartels. He actually testified against. Uh, he, he testified this. I want to hear what you have to say about it. Area code 508, what's up? You're on the horn. Oh, hey, Ghost. I was going? to talk to you about something. What's up? Like, there's this guy I know. He's He has a job and everything. He's a capitalist. He's like a diehard capitalist. But I, but the way you talk about capitalists, I'm not sure if he's a true capitalist or not. His name is Psy Guy, and he runs a broadcast just like you. And... In one episode of his broadcast, he talked about, like, sharing dreams, about having a date with Rainbow Dash in front of a hot topic, and was afraid his father would find out and believe he's a fruity-ass bastard. Well, and you know, he, he, you know, he should be very worried about that. Are you kidding me? He should be very worried about that. I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, if he's going to be sitting over here, uh, some stupid fruity-ass brony, he should be worried if old man finds him watching My Little Pony and, uh, you know, maybe, you know, toughens them up a little bit after, you know, that ridiculous, disgusting sight. So, yeah, he should be worried about it. Let me tell you something. He's a goddamn brony over there, you know, uh, jerking his chain to an eight-year-old girl cartoon. He ain't no goddamn capitalist, all right? He's a Roman Polanski butt-loving fruit bowl, and that's all there is to it. Area code 905, what's up? You're on the horn. Stupid. Uh, Tara Strong, you're on the horn. I need cupcakes for everyone at Occupy Wall Street. You should sober up and join us. Are oh, you stupid idiot? Are you kidding me? Ah, uh, you made cupcakes for all the Occupy Wall Street breaks, huh? You're proud of that, you stupid freaking bronies, huh? I knew you bronies were a bunch of commies, for Christ's sake. I bet you the only reason that you want to be communist is so that you can have a worldwide circle jerk on each other while you're dressed up like freaking talking horses, you stupid fruity bastards. Jesus Christ. Do you see what I have to put up with, folks? Uh, do, do you see the kind of crap that I have to put up with, for Christ's sake? Jesus Christ. We're supposed to be talking about Attorney General Eric Holder defying in his testimony to the Senate Judiciary Committee about Fast and the Furious. He actually thought it was a good job. He was defiant, for Christ's sake. I mean, the guns that were sold to Mexican drug cartels by the ATF ended up at crime scenes at the murders of Border Patrol agents, and yet we're just going to just completely bypass that. Like, oh, it was just a mistake. It was bad protocol. Jesus Christ. And, of course, nobody cares. you got this, you know, stupid, dumb, you know, brony-sounding piece of trash saying, Oh, I'm going to go and serve cupcakes at Occupy Wall Street. And you're just, Shut up! Area code 704, you're on the freaking horn. The man they call Jesus Christ. I mean... I mean, these remixes never stop, for Christ's sake, huh? I mean, it never stops, for Christ's sake. You know, I mean, I was uh, I was at a goddamn uh, Sixth Street bar, right? And, you know, on Sixth Street, they got the best bands, they got the best uh, uh, the best DJs, and, and for some reason, they had some kind of goddamn 80s schmeal going on here. They had like, some kind of 80s gig going on at this one bar here. And, you know, it kind of reminds me of a song that I heard. Uh, what the hell is it? It's, it's a song by Talk Talk. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's my life. Don't you forget. It's my life. It never ends. That's what it sounds like. You know, that, that, that's what I feel like every time I get one of these stupid remixes made of me. You understand? It's my life. Don't you forget. Caught in the crowd. It never ends. It's my life. Jesus Christ. Enough with the remixes, all right? Enough. 
Christ. It was, it was my first day back, you know. Anyway, we're supposed to be talking about Eric Holder here. Uh, what's going on? 720, you're on the damn horn. What's up? Hello? What's going on? Yo, Ghost, I got a question for you. What's up? I think it's kind of hard to understand you with all the penis in your mouth. You waited an hour to say that? Uh, it, ain't, it ain't been. Yeah, just shut up, you stupid loser. Jesus Christ! Can we get a ma- can we get a major fail for that asshole engineer? Jesus Christ! Major freaking fail, man! Ah, oh, Jesus Christ! No wonder we're getting our asses kicked by the Chinese and the Indians for Christ's sake. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, uh, Indians uh, no C plus plus by eleven years old. You know what I'm saying? This prick sounded like a twenty five year old prick that could barely sputter out a sentence fragment. Jesus Christ. Who else do we got? 860, what's up? You're on the horn. What's up? What's going on? Not much. I actually have a story from Occupy Wall Street. Oh, rather, it's about Occupy Wall Street. Uh, you know what? Your 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 uh, speakerphone sucks, and so do you. All right? 334, what's up? Nanas, nanas, I love you. Will you marry me? What? I said... Nyans, Nyanners, I love you. Oh, shut up, you stupid idiot, all right? I mean, give me a freaking break. Do a barrel roll or something. 251, what's up? Yeah, I want to ask you. Um, I want to go back to the Occupy Wall Street. Go uh, ahead. Yeah. Uh, did, you did hear about the college students being paid to uh, protest, did you? Uh, I'm not, pro- I'm not only them, but also uh, homeless folks. I mean, they're getting union folks out there. They're recruiting uh, protesters. You're absolutely right. I mean, this is an organized event out here, and the liberal media is not its not showing any of the violence whatsoever. No type of negative uh, media uh, output as it relates to this Occupy Wall Street protest. Yeah, they were also throwing uh, urine and blood on, on these uh, hot dog vendors because they stopped giving them free hot dogs and started charging them for it. Oh, my God, that's just disgusting. And, you know, and, you know, it doesn't surprise me. This is why you shouldn't be nice to people, folks. You understand? This is why you shouldn't be nice to people. You know, you got a couple of hot dog vendors out there in Occupy Wall Street. They showed a little compassion, a little bit of empathy to these idiot, vagabond, bum, ass clowns. You know, gave them a, a couple of hot dogs. And once, once you stop giving stuff away, no matter what it is, whether it's your time, your effort, your energy, your money, your gifts, Whenever you stop doing it, whoever you stop doing it for is going to look at you cross-eyed and is going to start talking bad about you. And in this case out here in the Occupy Wall Street uh, New York cases, I mean, they're throwing piss, blood, and urine at hot dog vendors because they're not giving them free hot dogs anymore, huh? Oh, doesn't that sound great, folks? Huh? That sounds just great, isn't it? Huh? Jesus Christ, and we expect America to somehow bounce back after we have this many losers that are willing to put this whole civilization in chaos because, ah, I'm not getting everything that I want for free. Jesus Christ. It's it's disgusting, man. It's disgusting. Area code 410, what's up? Hey, guys. Uh, good show. Hey, I, I gotta tell you, every day that goes by, I, I just I've been more and more shocked at the just general apathy of Americans. I mean, we've got Holler testifying. I mean, saying, "Yeah, we went ahead and illegally." I mean, that's illegally. They were illegally selling guns or allowing to be sold, and, and, and to argue that that was perfectly right. And then on international news, it's. <laughs> It's hard to believe that the French now are becoming more honest than Americans. When uh, the French prime minister said that uh, Netanyahu is a liar. Uh, you know, it just goes on and on and on. And every day it's like the U.S. is hitting a new low. I mean, new low is an understatement there, 410. I mean, it has gone to the bowels of realization. I mean, the bowels of reality, for Christ's sake. I mean, I cannot believe that these individuals can sit here and actually look at themselves in a straight face in the mirror and actually believe that they're participating as productive citizens in America, all right? 
I mean, if we were productive citizens, we wouldn't have the soulless cash whores that we have in Washington today. All right? We wouldn't have the lying scumbags that are sitting here telling us one thing when it comes to campaigning and doing a complete opposite as it relates to their actual legislation. All right? We wouldn't be sitting on our thumbs uh, bickering over bu- bullshit. Really, it's bullshit, ridiculous issues. You know? That's what we're debating over, ridiculous issues. Oh, he's pro-abortion. I can't vote for him. Oh, he's pro-gay marriage. I can't vote for him. I mean, these stupid issues that have nothing to do with one's own personal well-being. I mean, the reason America is in the pickle that it's in today is because these idiots vote against their own self-interest for a stupid, ridiculous issue, man. For a ridiculous issue, man. Jesus Christ. Unfreaking believable. Anyway, let me move on to another broadcast. Thanks a lot, 410, man. Very insightful uh, comment there. But what I want to talk about now is tomorrow at about 1 p.m., I believe, Central Standard Time, the National Emergency Alert System is going to be testing their uh, little alert system. Are you aware of this, folks? If you happen to be watching television or listening to the radio around 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, every radio and TV station, even cable, all right, is going to be taken over by this national, uh, what the hell is this? this, this national emergency alert system, all right? So give me a freaking break, all right? Now, I find it rather convenient uh, that, you know, the the powers that be, the government, want to test this system to see at the click of a button they could take control of all mediums. You know, there's something disturbing that there is an actual infrastructure in place for this to be possible, all right? I mean, seriously, I mean, and not only that, our tax money, all right? Our tax money went out to fund this nonsense just so that they can, uh, you know, uh, attest. Huh? Uh, this is a test. I wonder what the hell they're going to say. You know what I mean? I mean, th- this is kind of, uh, I wouldn't say scary, uh, but it, it, it should have heads turning, so to speak, because uh, in my personal opinion, uh, I don't like the fact that uh, some government bureaucracy – can flip the switch and have complete and total control of the television, cable, and phones, and radio. I mean, Jesus Christ, unfreaking believable. What are you going to do? Are you going to be at work like most of us, or are you going to be actually watching television? I mean, do you think this is, has anything to do with that asteroid that uh, you know is coming by our path? I, I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. What do you think about it? Area code 903, what's up? What do you think about it? Hey, Ghost, uh, this is GLB. I was actually calling about something earlier. I was a little uh, late for it. <clears throat> it's about the Herman Sugar Cane situation. Go for it, man. Uh, I'm actually c- kind of going to say that I'm a little proud of him in a way that he's actually you know, fighting against it and that he's standing up well to it because, I mean, I've seen people – in really similar dilemmas like that where they've been falsely accused of things of that nature, and it just makes me sick. I mean, it, it's You're not damn fair. right. It isn't and, fair. I mean, I honestly think he should just, like, save the time on it because, I mean, with the credibility that this person has doesn't really seem too much. I don't know. The person that is going against him, I'm not too informed on it, so I'm not too sure, but... No, well, no, you're absolutely right, young man. Let me tell you something. The broad that's coming forward, the one that's coming public out here, I mean, you know, uh, Herman Cain said it himself. He doesn't even know this slut, all right? And secondly, what did I say a couple of shows ago about these potential so-called victims of Herman Cain's sexual abuse? I said that if they're not minorities... There's some blonde, ditzy bimbo trying to be that overtly flirtatious, bubbly whorebag. I guarantee you, since all this time has passed by, she's going to have work done on her face. She's going to look like a burn victim. And lo and behold, out comes this Sharon Baya f- 
fan, I don't know what the hell, whatever her stupid name is, she comes out with her plastic face, She's going out, you know, making these false accusations, for Christ's sake, with no basis whatsoever. I mean, the reason that she's not going to have him charged criminally or taken him to court legally is because she has no proof. She's just going out there trying to get a goddamn book deal. She's going out there trying to get herself a lifetime movie deal, for Christ's sake. You think I'm, you think that I'm stupid there, Biolick? You think that I'm stupid there, you platinum plastic face? Bimbo! Jesus Christ. It just ma- it makes me sick, man. But I but I hear you, you know, uh Herman Cain's not gonna back down. I mean it, it doesn't matter what the media throws at him, he's not backing down because he knows he's the biggest threat to Barack Obama. Barack Obama is shaking in his mulatto shoes uh at the idea that Herman Cain could possibly be could possibly be the nominee for the GOP, all right? I mean, he's shaking in his mulatto shoes. You know it and I know it, for Christ's sake. Because it's going to take away his Trump card, the race card. Yeah. Yeah, you know, in 2008, what did they say? Oh, you're against Barack Obama because you're racist. Oh, you're not voting for him because you're racist. You're against him because you're racist. Jesus Christ. Anyway, let's move on. We were talking about the National Emergency Alert System to be tested tomorrow around 1 p.m. Central Time, something of that nature. But I want to talk a little bit about how Greece and Italy are choosing new leaders, and they're finally, you know, they're finally coming in with the now and realizing their socialism is imploding from within. And moreover, they're realizing that they have to be obligated to the individuals that invested in their country. So I am really glad to see that Greece ousted Papa Papa Giorgio, whatever the hell his stupid name is, out of Greece. And moreover, I'm glad that Berlusconi, this meatball-eating piece of crap, is finally going to resign as the damn leader of Italy, for Christ's sake. But, you know, there's a big discrepancy between Greece and Italy. You know, Greece uh, is just completely broken. I mean... Let's be honest. They produce nothing. They have no tax base to generate from to sustain their ridiculous socialist experiment. All right? And this is why the Greece scenario was such a tricky one, because inevitably these idiot Greece baklava-eating assholes are going to have to go back to work, and they don't want to go back to work. They don't want to go back to work, for Christ's sake. All right? You see, Italy, on the other hand, it's not necessarily in the same predicament, because believe it or not, they actually generate more taxes than they actually actually spend. What's keeping them down is old debts, old financial obligations uh, that need to be paid. And unfortunately, uh, this is kind of uh, throwing off the whole economic situation of Italy itself, old debt. Old debt. So once again, austerity measures have to be implemented in both of these countries, and it looks like they are going to, uh, you know, implement coalition governments, and these coalition governments are going to implement these austerity measures, and hopefully, uh, we can keep these two idiot countries in the eurozone because both the populations of these countries want to be in the eurozone. Uh, But let's see what happens. I mean, it's really keeping our goddamn markets here in the equities markets in America in a roller coaster ride of volatility. But now that we see new government infrastructure being put into place, maybe we'll see some change. But then again, maybe not. Who the hell knows? You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Yeah, anyway, who else we got? We got uh, got, uh, the caller that just recently called in talked about this. An open mic that was at the G20 summit actually picked up some conversation between uh, French President uh, Sarkozy and the United States President Barack Obama. Uh, Believe it or not, uh, it caught the French President uh, in reference to Benjamin Netanyahu, which is the Prime Minister of Israel, saying the following, I hate uh, that Netanyahu, I hate him, I can't stand him, he's a liar. You know, that's basically what they caught 
President Nicolas Sarkozy saying in an open mic. And you know what Barack Obama's response was to Sarkozy in response to, to that comment that he made about Benjamin Netanyahu? Oh, I can't stand him. He's a liar. I can't stand him. He's a liar. You, 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 know what, you know what Obama said in response? Hey, baby, you don't like him. I mean, i got to deal with him every day. <laughs> yeah, i got to deal with him every day. Like, like It's a burden, for Christ's sake. I mean, that's going to really improve Israeli-American relations, huh? Oh, Jesus Christ. Thanks a lot, Obama. All right? Jesus, that's just horrible. i got to deal with him every day, for Christ's sake. I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, uh, I mean, this is hurting Israeli-U.S. relations. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised after this uh, basically slap in the mouth. I'm, I'm sure Benjamin Netanyahu doesn't appreciate, uh, you know, being talked about like that. I wouldn't be surprised if Israel does a unilateral military assault on at some point because of this. I'm not joking. I mean, you know... Uh, this doesn't really help the Israeli-American relations, and I think that, in my personal opinion, that, uh, you know, this could, well, I'm not going to say anything. I, I, I don't want to say it because usually what I say comes to pass, and I don't want it to come to pass. But I'll tell you right now, it looks very, very probable that uh, Netanyahu could unilaterally implement a military front uh, because he feels isolated, not only in the region because of the Arab Spring, but uh, because of the language that are being that's being exchanged about him between two of the world's powers, for Christ's sake. So, I mean, man, this is very hairy, to say the least, and um, uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. Anyway, uh, we are in the third and final hour, folks, of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. And, of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. Before we get into anything else, I'd like for everybody to please retweet the broadcast. Go to the social networks. Go to the forums. Go to the blogs. And spread it around like wildfire. And let everybody know that True Capitalist Radio is in effect and in the house. That's right, folks. And, um... Uh, I hate to even ask the engineer, but uh, uh, do we got any goddamn Twitter shout-outs to be given out there, engineer? All right, folks. And for you folks that don't know, if you want a Twitter shout-out right here, right now, you need to go to my Twitter account at Ghost Politics, all one word, no underscores, and retweet the first tweet on the Twitter account, baby. Do you understand that? Retweet the first tweet on the Twitter account, and I'm going to give you a shout-out right now. Anyway, go ahead and put the uh, first set of shout-outs on the screen there, Engineer, all right? Yes, all right, let's go ahead and see who we got here for the uh, first set of shout-outs here. Uh, we've got uh, Panda Loves Ghost. we got somebody named Occupy 6th Street. Yeah, yeah, whatever, asshole. Uh, we got LOL at Oklahoma. Aw, oh, you son of a bitch. LOL at Oklahoma. I mean, not only did Oklahoma uh, receive an earthquake, and they're continuously receiving earthquakes and aftershocks, but they just got hit up by a goddamn tornado, man. I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, do you idiots even have a soul, for Christ's sake? I mean, do you even have a goddamn soul? Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't. I don't even know if I want to even say another goddamn Twitter shout out after that. I mean, you know, these these people, folks, and they're actually making Twitter names with these names on them, folks. I kid you not. I mean, it's just disgusting, is what it is. Jesus Christ. Uh, anyway, we've got hanging scrotum in the house. Uh, we got Gore Thok. Uh, we've got anonymous Plumo in the place. Uh, we got the aborted fetus. Hey, long time no see there, the aborted fetus. Uh, we got Ghost Train, one, two, three. Uh, we got Fruity Jew, whoever the hell that is. Uh, who the hell else do we got there, Engineer? Do we got any more? All right, we got a couple more here. Let's see what we got. 
Uh, we've got uh, Goat. No, I'm not saying that, you sick son of a bitch. Uh, we got MLP Emerald. Uh, we got Hambone Ghost. You stupid asshole. All right? I don't know how many times i got to tell you assholes, all right? I'm not a freaking Hambone! I'm not a freaking Hambone, for Christ's sake. Stop saying it! Holes for Christ's sake. Anyway, we got some idiot named Jubilee. Uh, we got somebody named Satan is my pal. Uh, somebody named Slippery Seaman. Uh, we've got Beast Mode 618. Uh, we've got uh, Poop Connoisseur. Uh, just Visiting 03. Uh, running Bathtub 07. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Uh, who the hell else do we got over here? We're going to say a couple more out here. These are getting a little, a little crazy here. Uh, we got the ham bone in the house. We got Ghost is Obama. No, I'm not, you sick son of a bitch. Some idiot named Colin Sniffer. That's disgusting. Uh, we got somebody named Johnny B. Ghost. Uh, we've got Epic Incest. Uh, we got Texas in Fuego. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Hot deals in Texas, Texas and Fuego. <laughs> Stupid assholes. I'm telling you this right now. You're lucky. You idiots are lucky. This is a fiber optically connected world called the Internet, and this ain't some goddamn barroom because I'd be kicking ass and taking some goddamn names on you sacks of crap. Anyway, we got Mary Xmas NY. Uh, we got somebody named Bray Bronies Die. Uh, we got OK Be Shaken. Uh, who else do we got? We got uh, NY Let It Snow. Uh, who else we got? We got Don, Dan Weldon, LOL. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right, that's enough. Hey, get, get them off, bitch. I'm not, I'm not doing any more goddamn shout-outs. Get them off, for Christ's sake. These people are sick. People are goddamn sick, all right? Anyway, once again, uh, we were talking about how uh, the French President Zarkozy was caught on an open mic at the G20 sub, uh, summit ca talking to Barack Obama in reference to Prime Minister of Israel Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, basically, Nicolas Sarkozy said, I, I can't stand him. He's a liar. Talking about Benjamin Netanyahu. And Barack Obama's response is, well, you think that's bad? i got to deal with him every day. <laughs> I got to deal with them every day, baby. Oh, Jesus Christ. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the next subject matter. Let's talk a little bit about how Bashar al-Assad, even though we reported was it sometime last week that he was in front of the Arab League pledging that he was going to stop inflicting violence upon his own people. Remember, he pledged to the Arab League. And did he listen? Absolutely not. We have continued to see more and more casualties as it relates to uh, this unfortunate crime against humanity in Syria. Bashar al-Assad, the totalitarian tyrant in Syria, continues to kill his own people. I mean, continues to kill his own people, for Christ's sake. And all they are doing is protesting. They're just protesting. I mean, these idiots in Occupy Wall Street are pissing and moaning because they're throwing tear gas to disperse this vagabond bum revolution mob. I mean, meanwhile, you have Bashar al-Assad in Syria shooting his own people. He's killing children. He's killing women, for Christ's sake. And all they're doing is protesting out there. They are protesting the totalitarian regime that is Bashar al-Assad. We're almost at 4,000 casualties, almost at 4,000 people dead as it relates to Bashar, Bashar al-Assad's violence upon his own people. Almost 4,000. It's disgraceful. And this idiot actually pledged that he was going to stop killing his own people in front of the Arab League. Unbelievably disgusted. Death to Bashar al-Assad! Death! Death to Bashar al-Assad! And you can tell him I said that! You can tell him I said that. Anyway, once again, I mean, you know, crimes against humanity in Syria, 
And it took, I mean, this has been going on since February. It took until this past August for the United Nations just to even bat an eye at this crimes against humanity in Syria. It took until August for Barack Obama finally to say something about this disgusting, sadistic, murderous campaign that's being, uh, I don't even want to talk about it. Let's get to another subject matter. All right, we're running out of time here, for Christ's sake. I want to talk a little bit about this Penn State child abuse case. Are are you all familiar with what's happening at Penn State? Anybody? Anybody know what's happening at Penn State? Well, let me explain to you what's happening at Penn State, all right? Penn State, of course, is the infamous athletic, uh, you know, coach that has been there for 50 years, Joe Paterno, you know? This guy's 84, 85 years old, still coaching out there in Penn State. Anyway, he had an assistant coach, all right, an assistant coach out there that actually ran a nonprofit organization for children. And believe it or not, this assistant coach utilized the facilities at Penn State uh, when partaking in the activities uh, that were, I guess, required as a part of his nonprofit organization. And remember, these were all kids in this assistant coach nonprofit organization. Well, according to witness reports, and the witnesses were ex football players to Penn State, ex uh, ex players to Paterno's program. They actually witnessed this assistant coach sexually abusing these children who were a part of his nonprofit organization, who utilized the Penn State facilities when, you know, for, for his own nonprofit purposes, he was actually witnessed abusing these children sexually in the Penn State showers. All right. Now the student or the football player in question that saw the assistant coach molesting uh the child in the showers went to Joe Paterno, all right? Joe Paterno, instead of going right to the police and, you know, basically having this idiot arrested, so on and so forth, all right, he goes to the president of the athletic department at Penn State. And the president of the athletic department at Penn State goes to the chancellor of the goddamn university. And believe it or not, they tried to keep this on the down low, they tried to cover everything up. They tried to cover it up, for Christ's sake, as far as perjuring themselves in a court of law as it related to this crap. Yeah. I mean, he's crazy. I mean, can, can you believe this? They're perjuring themselves in a court of law. Jesus Christ. Anyway, the chancellor of the school, all right, resigned, all right? The athletic director designed, resigned, okay, completely resigned. What I don't understand is why isn't Joe Paterno resigning, all right? This old prostate-infected piece of crap, all right? I mean, why in the blue hell are you not resigning for not going right to the police when somebody reported seeing your assistant coach Fondling some goddamn kid in the showers out there. How come you aren't resigning there, Joe Paterno, you old prostate-infected bastard? I think that the game has passed you by anyway there, Joe Paterno. But, of course, he is not resigning. And you got these idiots at Penn State out there, these stupid imbeciles uh, that are in support of Joe Paterno as it relates to this sick, sadistic case. So in my personal opinion, Joe Paterno, you 84, 85-year-old piece of prostate-infected crap, you need to step down. And I know that Penn State is trying to, I don't know, look for some kind of legal maneuver so that they can basically let Paterno go. Uh, But inevitably, uh, this man is not stepping down. He's going to continue to be the coach. He thinks that, uh, I don't know, this child molestation charge as it relates to his Assistant coach is going to somehow go away. It's not going to go away, Joe Paterno, and you're a sick son of a bitch. All right? You're a sick son of a bitch. Well, And, and you know why these uh, 
athletic directors and these chancellors, you want to know why they lied? Because they were not supposed to let this assistant coach utilize the facilities of Penn State for his nonprofit organization. And not only were they not supposed to let him do that, but this guy molested children at this university. I mean, so this is serious, serious stuff. And if you haven't read about this, well, then, my God, you need to go out there and research this. This is a horrible case. Joe Paterno, this guy needs to be uh, bitch slapped beyond belief. And for him to have the audacity to not step down is just unfreaking believable. Unfreaking believable. Anyway, I want to talk about another subject matter. Uh, does anybody know that uh, Mississippi is about to add an amendment to its constitution? An amendment to its constitution called the Personhood Amendment? Meaning that they are redefining life at the moment of conception. All right? And they're making this an amendment to the Constitution of Mississippi, believe it or not. They are defining life at the moment of conception. Right when the sperm enters the egg, there is a life happening, and as a result, they are going to prosecute anybody who is killing in the regard of abortion, anybody who is going to breach this new amendment called the personhood amendment, that means that anybody who is partaking in abortions, whether you're somebody getting an abortion, whether you're a doctor uh, giving an abortion, whether you're giving an after, uh, what do you go, what is it, the, the after pill, I mean, all those for, for, uh, all those forms of contraception, those are now, that's now murder under Mississippi law if this amendment is finally fulfilled out there in Mississippi. And, you know, I find it rather ironic that the most anti-abortion state in the Union, Mississippi, is yet the most entitled state in the Union. Yeah. Yeah, it's not only the most entitled states, which most of the entitlements go to, than any other state in the Union, but it's also the most uneducated state in the Union, all right? So it's no coincidence why we have these stupid, inbred, single-wide, trailer park-living hicks in Mississippi actually obliging this dumbass idea that, yeah, yeah. We're going to have the personhood amendment to the Mississippi Constitution, and we're going to define life right at the moment of contraception. That's right. That's what we're going to do, and there ain't nothing you can do about it. I mean, it's stupid. This is the most entitled state in the Union. There are more people collecting entitlements in Mississippi than any other state in the Union. And these idiots have the audacity to sit over here and try to make a law so that they can have more people? <laughs> so they have more people in Mississippi? It doesn't make sense, man. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, America has a has a war against ignorance, man. We have a war against ignorance, and, and ignorance is winning. Ignorance is winning. I mean, good God. I mean, all you got to do is look at the legislation. I mean, ignorance is winning, for Christ's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make any sense, man. You Mississippi dumb shit-kicking hicks. You are the most entitled state in the Union. You're a bunch of uh, moochers off of the goddamn United States, you dumb hicks. All right? And you're sitting over here adding an amendment to the Constitution so that you can have more losers walking around in your state? I mean, on the contrary, I think that they not only need to have abortion in Mississippi... I mean, I think they need to have forced sterilization in some of these parts. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, how in the hell are you going to sit here and make this stupid, ridiculous personhood amendment when Mississippi, the state adding this to their constitution, is the most mooching state of the union? I mean, give me a freaking break, all right? I'm not joking. I think that, hey, look, if you have no means of income, you have no job, you're you're living off the government, all right, and you're having, you know, two kids going on three, four, five, 
I think that there need to be some tubes tied. And, and, and if the person sitting over there shitting out these goddamn kids are like, um, no, I don't want to have my tubes tied. Well, too bad, all right? Too bad. Why don't you stop shitting out children that you can't afford? Because in my personal opinion, people who shit out children that they can't afford, that is the worst kind of child abuse. Can you believe that? The worst type of child abuse that anyone could imagine. I mean, shitting out a child that you can't afford, you know? Having children that you can't, you know, feed, that you can't take care of, for Christ's sake. I mean, that that's child abuse. Jesus Christ. But once again, you know, Mississippi, you know, these stupid shit-kicking hicks out there, they're going to pass the personhood amendment that's going to define life at the moment of conception. And if you happen to take any kind of morning after pill and the state of Mississippi finds out about it, you're going to be sitting in some of them shit-kicking hick county jails out there <laughs> in Kalamazoo or some car- some kind of garbage like that. Anyway, uh, let me move on to the last subject matter. And I want to talk a little bit about this NBA lockout. And the reason I want to talk about this NBA lockout is because these assholes out here in the players' union are literally trying to, you know, basically hold over the league, over the owners. All right, let me tell you what the dispute is over. The dispute is over how much percentage the players are going to receive as it relates to the profits of the actual basketball organization. All right? So let me explain it. And you know what? Throw martial law on these idiots. And you throw martial law on these assholes, these stupid sacks of crap. Throw martial law on them. Anyway, before uh, the the league, believe it or not, was actually uh, delving out the profits in this manner. The players got 57% of the NBA profits. 57% is what the players got. The owners got 43%. Well, unfortunately, the players ain't playing very well, all right? They suck, all right? They suck now, all right? I mean, look at LeBron James in last year's finals, for Christ's sake, all right? This guy's supposed to be some phenom out of high school. He choked his chicken last year, for Christ's sake, man. It's ridiculous. I'm sick, I'm sick. and you know what? There was a poll taken recently on NBA fans on whether or not they missed the NBA because of the goddamn lockout. And 70% of the NBA fans said no. We don't miss the NBA because it sucks now. All right? It sucks. We're tired of seeing Jawan Howards, you know, and Tracy McGrady's, you know, these assholes that play just good enough until they get a goddamn $90 million contract. And then once they get the $90 million guaranteed contract, they stink up the place for the remainder of the contract. It sucks, all right? And I'm glad the NBA is on strike, all right? I'm glad these NBA players aren't making any money. They don't deserve the money they're getting paid, all right? And as far as I'm concerned, I think that the NBA should, ha- should hire replacements, all right, you want to you want to provide economic opportunity in the economy? Why don't you provide anybody open call replacements to replace these dumbass overpriced assholes that basically ride the bench with fake injuries out here in the NBA? How about that? How about an open call of everybody? I'm talking about street ballers. I'm talking about uh, you know college players. Just go out there and just get a bunch of replacements, man. Who gives a crap? The game sucks now anyway, NBA. The game sucks now anyway, so just go out there and get some street ballers. Go out there and get some college players that actually want to play the game and not be a bunch of, you know, mooching-ass jerk dicks like the NBA players of today. I mean, that'll give a a boost to the economy. Are you kidding me? And I I I would see nothing more. I would love to see nothing more to see these stupid, disgusting, overpaid NBA players be out of work for an exuberant amount of time, all right? Because do you show do you show any kind of compassion to these NBA players who want 57% of the profits when basically the, the owners want 50-50, you know, because, hey, the bottom line is, hey, I put up the money for the for all the, the games and the concessions and the goddamn uh, arenas and so on and so forth. 
So I think that we need to go 50-50. Not only that, you're not worth 57% NBA players. You're not worth it. You suck. You suck the chrome of a 57 Chevy bumper when it comes to the goddamn play in the NBA. I mean, two words, LeBron James, man. He's an idiot. I mean, how in the hell are you going to choke? I mean, how can you call yourself the best player in the NBA when you're going to choke your chicken when it comes down to you having to make the big shots? Jesus Christ, I'm so sick. I'm sick of you people in this chat room, too. All of you people in this chat room flapping your fat Cheeto-stained fingers on the keyboard talking garbage to me, screw you, you idiots. You're lucky I even came back today for Taco Tuesday, you sorry sacks of crap. You assholes are lucky that I even came back today. Stupid scumbags. As a matter of fact, let me tell you something right now. We're going to go right into Radio Graffiti, all right? That's right. Radio Graffiti! That's right. We're going to go right into Radio Graffiti. And if it sucks, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm not giving any shout-outs. Go suck an egg, all right? That's all there is to it. I'm not joking. If you all suck on this Radio Graffiti, I'm getting off. I'm going down to 6th Street, Millitime, baby. Taco Tuesday style. And for you folks that don't know, every Tuesday out here on 6th Street, Austin, Texas, baby, dollar you call it, baby, dollar you call it. That's right, anything you want to drink, one dollar. Woo! <laughs> and for you folks that don't know what Radio Graffiti is, it is your time in the broadcast for you to partake in the damn broadcast. And how do you do it? Well, you, you Give me a call, 646-652-4869. And when I call on your area code or on your Skype name, you have exactly three to four seconds to say whatever is on your mind. All right? That's all there is. What, whatever is on your mind, baby. So let's just go ahead and start it right now. And if it sucks, I'm leaving. All right? Screw all you people talking garbage in the chat room. Screw all you people talking garbage in the chat room. Piece of crap. Look at him. Look at these idiots, you stupid scumbags. Anyway, let's take it from the top here. Strap on, Radio Graffiti. Now you're taking too long, you idiot. Mr. Tacos, Radio Graffiti. As you was, I've been able to the porter's son, and he loves Mr. Tacos, Tacos. Stupid idiot. Discard Skype, Radio Graffiti. Nager, 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 nager. I'm 100% racist. Nager, nager, nager. You son of a bitch. I never said that, you sorry sack of crap. I never said that, you splice it shit! Damn it! I never said that! I never freaking said that! I never said that! God damn it! I'm not a goddamn racist! How many times am I gonna get that through your thick noggin, for Christ's sake? I'm not a racist. I'm a melting pot of friendship. I'm a nice guy. God, you sorry, sick. You splicey pieces of crap. I never said that. You piece of crap. Give me that goddamn mic. You goddamn splicers, all right? You're getting on my freaking nerves, all right? You're getting on my goddamn nerves. I'm not a racist, assholes, all right? I'm not a goddamn racist. Area code 347, Radio Graffiti. Ubrate me a un mendula. Ubrate me a un dula. Ubrate me. Yeah, shut up. All right. Chupla mi huevo con mi chorizo pinche pendejo. All right, puto. Seven two zero radio graffiti. Seven two zero radio graffiti. Ah, Jesus Christ! Turn down the radio, okay, asshole. Five zero two radio graffiti. 
Fighting time, trying to save the world. Shut up, you stupid, over fruity ass bastard. 215, Radio Graffiti. I don't I'm I'm I i do not know what the what else to do. It's freaking goddamn God. 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 Goddamn calls! I don't know how much how much more I can take of this crap. All right, I refuse, and I ref- I refuse to have my show besmirched by a bunch of fat, overbloated, jelly ass losers on the internet. I refuse to do it. Area code two six zero. You're on the goddamn horn. Yeah, I'm tired of all these Rudy Poos in Mississippi thinking they're entitled to everything. They need. Yeah, you're, go- you're goddamn right. I'm sick of those goddamn shit-kicking, cheese-whiz-guzzling old episodes of Hee Haw Watching Hicks out there thinking they're entitled to so much crap, too. Area code 509, Radio Graffiti. You're playing with your goddamn pe- pecker shaft. 704, Radio Graffiti. Hey, if you walk out. Shut up. 603, Radio Graffiti. I go mini until the end, Josh is a faggot. We don't even understand what you're saying. 508, Radio Graffiti. Shut up, all right? I don't appreciate that remix either, assholes, all right? 516, Radio Graffiti. (laughs) Hey, dude, like, did you ever notice that, like, Tom is, like, human? Shut up, you stupid pothead, all right? Why don't you stop puffing on the magic dragon and get in with the now, all right? And don't call me dude either. I'm sick and tired of you stoners in here calling me dude. Don't call me dude. 262, Radio Graffiti. Ryan's a fag. Are you good? Suck my dick. Shut up, you stupid moron. 269, Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost. It's me again. Love your show. Hey, thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. 339, Radio Graffiti. What kind of fruity-ass song is that? 609, Radio Graffiti. Shout out to all the deaf mutes. Shout out to all the deaf mutes? What, what, what an asshole. What kind of shit was that? Uh, 781, Radio Graffiti. <laughs> Shut up, you stupid moron. All right, 606, Radio Graffiti. This is Debbie's our decent We can't understand what you're saying. Take whatever you got in your mouth and take it out. Area code 336, Radio Graffiti. Jesus Christ, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You remix me with that Mexican Christmas song, for Christ's sake? I mean, do you think that I want to hear that? Do you think that I have some kind of fetish of me? Feliz Navidad. Da, 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 da. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. Stupid idiots. 
I don't speak Mexican, all right? 713 Radio Graffiti. It's not Mexican, it's Spanish. Oh, well, excuse me. What are you? Are you Mexican? No, well, no, I'm just saying. Are, 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 you, are you Mexican? Do you speak no, Mexican? No, no. no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, like. What? Never mind. Mama La Chocho, what? Hey, get this, get this stupid idiot. Get him off, for Christ's sake. 412 Radio Graffiti. What's up, dude? Stop calling me dude, asshole. 832 Radio Graffiti. Hey, what's up, ghost? It's Asho. Oh, it's this stupid loser. You know what? Hey, Asho. Uh, guess up? what I'm you had for dinner? Guess, what you, guess, guess oh, what you had yeah. for dinner? You... Make guess, up... guess what you had for dinner? Bean and cheese. All right? You stupid, dumb, idiot Mexican kid. I hope that bra. I hope whoever had that stupid kid. I hope that that broad, you know, gets cancer of the uterus. Uh, 269, Radio Graffiti. Hey, can I talk to your husband, Alex Jones, for a second? <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I mean, you should kill yourself with that fruity-ass voice, for Christ's sake. I mean, Jesus Christ, if you haven't already turned into a trans testicle. Uh, 813, Radio Graffiti. It's I mean, I mean, do y'all do y'all hear this for Christ's sake? Do y'all hear this, man? I mean, these idiots are making remixes in real time for Christ's sake. Cosmo Brockington, Radio Graffiti. Woo! Cash in everything around me. Creep it. Yeah. Dollar, dollar bill. Take it, go flash it out. <laughs> That's actually a pretty good song. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't mind being remixed to that song. That's actually a pretty good little Wu Tang song before they sold out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cash rules everything around me. Cream is the money. Dollar dollar bill, y'all. It's a badass song. Three one four radio graffiti. Goddamn talking horse fetish bastards. 806, Radio Graffiti. Yo, dog, I heard you like airplanes, so I flew one into your tower. Oh, that's horrible. That's that's a sick thing to say, you sorry sack of crap. I hope you get cancer of the prick. 503, Radio Graffiti. If you're a mounting pot of friendship, why do you hate everyone in Canada? I, I don't hate everybody in Canada, all right? I don't even know where Canada is. I know where Canada is. I don't like people from Canada. Those are some idiot scumbags that live in some goddamn ice hole that think that they own the world because they're a pimple on the ass of America, all right? Idiots from Canada. You know, and then, and then you sell us your old one ball Tom Green over here and thinking that we're just going to continue to sustain this old prostate infected piece of crap, all right? Why don't you idiots from Canada stay in Canada, all right? How about that? Go hump a dead moose and stay in Canada, all right? Go tickle your bacon bit ridden nutty ass crack with a maple leaf and stay in Canada. Sorry, sex are crap. 646 Radio Graffiti. I'm not a freaking ham bone, asshole. I'm not a freaking ham bone! Hyperstick Radio Graffiti. Hey, Fluttershot, you want to talk to Ghost? No way. He's a fucking... You're, you're cutting in and out, you idiot. I know that you tried hard, but uh, it sucks. 510, Radio Graffiti. I'm Ghost. Let me lick the sweat off your nutsack, bitch. Oh, Jesus Christ, that's an insult for Christ's sake. I mean, a guy who admits on uh, licking sweaty sacks? I mean, come on. The Chiz, Radio Graffiti. And I really appreciate the lynching of Herman Cain. Uh, shut up, you stupid asshole. I never said that, you splicing piece of crap. Jesus Christ. 786, Radio Graffiti. <laughs> shut up, you idiot. Or, Fady 3, what's going on, Radio Graffiti? Uh, Orf must be away. 817, Radio Graffiti. Dude, my penis looks like a Twizzler. Oh, Jesus Christ, sounds like a personal problem. 313, Radio Graffiti. 
At least cancer got jobs. At least cancer got jobs. At least... Stupid assholes. Freaking splicer. 702 Radio Graffiti. Your mom goes... Yeah, your mother. How about that? Your disgusting, filthy, crustacean in the pussy mother, all right? Nine one or nine seven one radio graffiti. Go, scumbag. It's Nikolai. How are you doing? Nobody cares about your stupid cockeyed Russian ass, you stupid vodka drinking piece of crap. All right. Two zero eight radio graffiti. Hey, Gus. I'll take a shit in your Jewish beard. I don't have a beard, you stupid idiot. Uh, three one eight radio graffiti. And play with your Peter Popper. 619 Radio Graffiti. Playing with your Peter Popper. Uh, 262 Radio Graffiti. Ghost, I think he's coming to my house. You're going to miss my little pony, baby buds. Oh, shut up. All right, 603 Radio Graffiti. Ghost, I... Shut up. Seven radio Graffiti. Radio Graffiti. Yeah, turn, hey, turn on the goddamn radio, ass clown. 915 Radio Graffiti. Capitalism is for proletarian faggots, and Herbert Cain is a faggot. Yeah, shut up. All right? Sounds like you're trying to, you know, make your voice deeper than it is there, Fruit Bowl. <laughs> a little bit of femini- feminization in the voice there, boy. <laughs> there we go, 303 Radio Graffiti. Three months of winter COVID and awesome holidays. Goddamn brony. Get that brony off the goddamn line, for Christ's sake, all right? Sick of these bronies, all right? They are sick, perverted, freaking child molesters, all right? My little pony was meant for eight-year-old girls, you sick perverts! Anyway, who else we have? Plasma Grenade, Radio Graffiti. <laughs> We can't understand you, you stupid idiot. 580 Radio Graffiti. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, r- real funny, asshole. Real funny. <laughs> Ghost Train, Radio Graffiti. God 
there, Mike, for Christ's sake. Let me tell you something, you scumbags. I am out. All right, I am through. I'm done. Put a fork in me. I'm done with this crap. Let me tell you something, you sorry scumbags. You'll be lucky if I come here tomorrow and do another broadcast. Do you understand that? You idiots will be lucky if I come here and do another broadcast. I don't care if there's 17 minutes left. I don't care if you idiots want shout-outs for Christ's sake. Look at how you people are treating me for Christ's sake. I deserve more respect. But you idiots fail to give it to me. You, you, fail, you just want to sit over here and agitate like a bunch of fat, jelly-ass, flappy-tit losers. Yeah, that's what you idiots do. Now, let me tell you something. I don't care how many more minutes we have in the goddamn broadcast. I don't care how many goddamn shout-outs I can give out. I don't care. You understand? You idiots need to learn for Christ. As a matter of fact, put chat room martial law on their asses, engineer. Put chat room martial law on them. Let me tell you something. I warned you, scumbags. All right? I warned you that I would just leave the next time that you idiots call me up trying to make me look like a jag off. Now, I told you that I would not do a goddamn broadcast next time you idiots call me up and do these damn remixes, all right? I mean, have you idiots done a YouTube search lately? Huh? Have you done a YouTube of True Capitalist Radio, Ghost Capitalist, or anything variants thereof, for Christ's sake? Have you taken a look at all the videos being put forth by these goddamn scumbags for Christ's sake? I mean, good dudes! <laughs> For Christ's sake, I've had enough. I've had about enough of this crap. I deserve more respect than this, for Christ's sake. Do you understand that? I mean, I'm shooting pearls to you idiots, and look at how you disrespect me. You besmirch my program. You besmirch me, and I'm not going to take any goddamn more of it. I'm not going to take any more of this crap. I'm not going to take any more of this crap. You understand that, you sorry sacks of shit? Huh? And hey, look at them. They're laughing at me for crap. They're laughing. They're laughing. Me anymore. I'm not going to let you idiots 
besmirch me any goddamn more. I'm out of here. Get me out of here, engineer. God damn it. Get me out. You've been listening to True Capitalist Radio. The thoughts, views, ideas, comments, and opinions of the host of this show are absolutely his. Catch more live episodes Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30 Central. Or check out archive shows at blogtalkradio.com. True Capitalist Radio. That's it. Boar's Head is bringing a slice of Japan to the deli. Introducing Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki-style chicken. Tender, slow-roasted chicken breast, coated in our signature teriyaki glaze, where ginger, garlic, and a hint of brown sugar meet for a flavor that's both sweet and savory. New Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki-style chicken. The bold flavor of Japan, now at the deli. Only from Boar's Head. Compromise elsewhere.